Especially the white folks, the white folks though. Yeah. Hey, hey, we Tennessee is like number one per capita. We up there with New York and um, yeah, it is California. It is. Oh, I was like, hey, look, they almost made me do it again, Mike. Tell ACL. <laughs> I went to a store. I ain't have a mask. They talking about it's okay. That's all oh, hell no. No, it ain't. It ain't okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey I've been down that road. No, hey, dog, I, go to the, I go around to the corner store, dog. And if it's more than two people in there, I sit in my car till I till they come out. <laughs> hey, man, it's, it's, hey, it's that, serious, Instacart. Man. I Instacart everything, man. Come on, shit. Even Costco. Damn. Hey, Lewis, what, what is the hey, team talking What about? is that behind you? What is that behind you? Is, is that a cutout? <laughs> I know you see it. Hey, you got, you, you got an action photo. You got an action photo up there. Hey, hey, I, hey. Knew, I knew Mike could see it. He's all about that damn boo. Where that boo at? That damn boo. <laughs> hey, boo, he trying to get first class, ain't he? Damn, mm-hmm. like, boo, like twice. Texas. <laughs> oh, damn, that shit in there. Hey, but look here, Lou. What you doing? You getting a haircut? What you got on a cape? Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Joe. He ain't giving you no haircut in That's that matter. <laughs> hey, hey Miss Oklahoma. Hello, Miss Oklahoma. <laughs> Would you that, hey, that, I knew that girl was gonna be great when she was born on the 26th. She's a yeah, oh, yep, the same day. I don't know. You know that's some hell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fellas. Hey, man, they they blowing up my phone, wondering where y'all at. So I'm gonna go to Facebook Live. Okay. Okay. Right, Nupsy. What Mother and, Nupsy. Hey, what's going on? It's, it's gonna be public, so <laughs> all your fans will be able to watch it. All right. Yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll let you know when we go live. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you know what kind of night this gonna be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big black man. Up when we go live, all right. All right. It's big I heard you, Mike. Baby. You're him. Yeah. He's a big black man, baby. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, man. Take your time, boo. Yes. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Hey, how Victoria doing, uh, Lewis? Everybody's good, man. Uh, shit, Victoria from the retired next month or sometime. Must Uh-oh. be nice. <laughs> you ain't lying. Right. Joe must Uh-oh. be. Hey, hey man, sweet you... Lou. Sweet Lou. Yeah. You only got one more time to call for. We don't have to cut you off. I'm yeah. going to put my mask on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you know this lady um, who retired, she told me one of the best things, man. She said, when she retired, every day is a Saturday for her. Now that's living. We got living, live, right? fellas. That's 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 living. Yep, yep. How's everybody doing? What's going on, Mike? What's up? Show time. What's Happy up? New Year, Show. my brothers. What's Happy up, New Year. Year. Happy hey, New what's Year. going on now? I'll be damned, man. It is good to see y'all. And you know, we just went live, but we've been in the waiting room for about five minutes, just cutting up. Like we haven't skipped a beat from back in the day. <laughs> oh man, you know, lasting impressions, man. Lasting impressions, man. Hey, when you with your brothers and good people, man, it's always a good time. See, yeah. I used to, I used to know that guy behind Sweet Lou on the wall. That's my brother. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know who <laughs> that with you right now. Hey, that's Slim. That's Slim Lou. Hey, no, that's strike, hey, that's strike two, Lou. You done cough twice. That's strike two. <laughs> Yeah, my mask on. Hey, you, hey, you about to get, you about to get out, uh, get the vaccine. <laughs> hey, I'm the that bo- age. I can hey. get them that age. The both of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, man, I, uh, I know everything about y'all, but I had to go deep, deep, deep <laughs> undercover and do some research. And when I googled all of you, we all show up. When I Google Mike Wilson, I see myself. When I Google Showbiz, I see all of us at some point. When I Google Paul, all of us appear at some point. And when I Google Lou, same thing. So we have been a part of each other's lives for so long, man. And you need to stop following me then. We travel the world <laughs> together. What'd you say, Mike? 
you need to stop following me then. Like, <laughs> oh, hey, oh. Sweet Lou. Yeah. I still tell the picture. I still tell the story, man. You how you still mad at me, man? How you? Halle uh, Berry. Yeah, the Halle Berry picture. <laughs> <laughs> Well, go on and share the story, bro. Yeah, yeah. Share since, the story. since you done went way ahead of what we're trying to do, <laughs> go ahead and tell us about the Halle Berry story, Mike. Uh, uh, it was it was me, Sweet Lou, and Showbiz. It was Curly Neal, uh, rest in peace. He was there too, and uh, we were doing to, doing a Today Show. And me and Sweet Lou, uh, we already done, done the uh, Today Show before, so we knew Halle Berry was on there. So you know, after the interview, you usually come up on the elevator in the green room. And me and Sweet Lou were standing right there. <laughs> so, so she came, man, walked in there, gave Curly Neal a big old kiss. I said, God, I said, I was jealous. I was furious. <laughs> and uh, uh, she, I was like, can we take some pictures? She was like, sure. She put her hand around my waist. You know I made my stomach muscles really hard. When she did. <laughs> so, so she had her hand around my waist. And we took a picture. So Sweet Lou come and said, can I take a picture? She said, sure. But she didn't move her hand went around my waist. So I did not move. <laughs> every, time, every time I mention it, Sweet Lou give me your old dirty look. <laughs> you photo bombed him. I, I, I tried to crop him out. I couldn't crop him out. I tried to crop him out. And it was too close. Part of that story is, Albert Brooks was on, on the show. The guy that does the voice for, I know he's a famous actor, but I think he's really known now for uh, doing the voice in uh, Finding Nemo. He's Nemo's dad, mm -hmm. Albert Brooks. Yeah. And me and, uh, me and Showbiz, we were standing in the hallway and uh, uh, somebody said, hey guys, uh, I know you just met Halle Berry. You want to meet uh, Albert Brooks? Me and Showbiz looked at each other like, nah, we good, we good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how you, go from, how you go from that to that? Yeah, <laughs> man, I, got me, I got me a good photo of her, man. Me and her yeah. together, man. And it's I did good. too, man. I did. Yeah, right. hey. Like, hey. Got, all of y'all be eye, hey. Hey. all of y'all better sleep with one eye open. <laughs> Sorry for skipping, Curly, man. That's just a story. Oh, no, hey, hey, that story hey. last week. I wasn't there that day. I ain't part of that Google. <laughs> I'm, hey, no, I'm, I'm, I'm part, I'm, I, I didn't mean that. See, there one you go. I wanted to go thing again. There you go. Hey, man, you know. Early, early. <laughs> well, look here, fellas. I'm excited to see all of you. We've been through so much together. We traveled the world together. So your Globetrotter career is well documented, without a doubt. But we're going to go back. We're going to take it back and learn something about your past before Globetrotters, before you guys became the legends that you are. So... I'm going to start with, uh, let's see. I'm going to start with Paul Showtime Gaffney. The I youngest. Cumberland. Well, we don't know about right? that. Yeah, we don't know about that one. We're going to check, check the birth certificate on that one, Paul. Pop population, I don't know. <laughs> what population? Oh, population of what? What's In that? Cumberland, Kentucky. Uh, uh, all in County. It's, it's, all in County. Family. Uh, we, well, we're talking about, about nah, we, we're just talking a few people, few people, few people. Few people. Few people. A, a, a good picnic, a good picnic. All right, so it's, it's really tell, about please Harlan tell the County audience, probably. the people that don't know Paul Gaffney, right. please tell the audience how you grew up, who put right. the ball in your crib, who got you interested in basketball? What was it like growing up? Well, you know, I was adopted growing up. Um, my, my biological mom was a uh, teenage mom and uh, she had a, a child right before right before me about a year before me and you know during that time in the late 60s it was it wasn't as popular or as susceptible to have you know kids at, uh, at as a teenager so her mom told her she had two options uh, either have an adoption or have an abortion and um, it was a family that was in uh, in the area that couldn't have kids and they were like in the early 60s or late 50s, early 60s. And so I was adopted at birth. Um, so at that time, so being uh, adopted, being in a rural area and my mom that I was adopted to died when I was about to turn two on the 18th of January. And I was 
uh, turning two on the 26th, on that great day that Sweet Lou knows so well. Um, yes, <laughs> and so, huh? You're not gonna let him forget it, Paul. No, 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 no. He can't forget his daughter. That's his daughter's birthday. <laughs> and so the uh, and so she died. So I was raised by a single parent, my father, being in a rural area. Um, and so for me, um, the basketball started from a guy that wanted to talk to my my uh, basically my aunt. She was like 16 years old, and I was. You know, she took care of me when I was, you know, young and he wanted to try to talk to her. So he knew to go, go to her, he had to go through me. So he put me on the basketball court. So around about six, six, seven years old, I started learning how to play basketball at that time. So from there, you know, the rest of it grew. All right. Uh, how good were you in grade school? Because you're six, 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 seven. Were you one right. of the... The kids that grew early and was taller than most of the kids in your class and I, dominated them. Well, we had we you know we had a uh, I had a I had a good career coming up and you know I, then I was faster, <laughs> but you know maybe just <laughs> learning the game and and having a a knack for the game. Uh, I you know we all you know everybody has out and probably everybody that came out they had just one rival one guy that was really you know, from the other side of town, um, a guy named Nick Sanford. We went to play the elementary against each other, high school, end up later in college, played against each other, played with each other in the uh, Kentucky, really? Indiana All-Star game. I mean, guy could play. And it was just one of those rivals that you already knew that you had to uh, you had to come and play every, every game with. It was always that in the county, in that area. And I had two guys, my my cousin and a good friend that was uh, older than me, but we were best friends. We best friends and my brother, Derek Cal, Gary Amos. And they really kept me straight and they they played, they played. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things that if kids out there to just listen is to, you know, how good people around you, like these guys I have that's on this Zoom, on the Zoom call, because they, they kept me out of trouble. You know, I had an incident that um, I could have went down a different path, you know, during that time, you know, just to be honest, we was out and I thought about it. And they were like, man, are you stupid? What are you doing? What are you, what are you even thinking about it? And so it just led me down. It could have been a whole different path because those guys that were smoking went through a whole different path in life than, the, than me and my friends uh, went. And so... You know, you got to have good people around you to grow. I mean, it's like having good soil. If you don't have good soil, you won't grow. Right on. And it was, it, it's just, it's great. I mean, that's how I, I, you know, when I came in, I was a true, I know Sweet Lou hate me saying this, but I was a true Sweet Lou fan. I was, um, I looked up to Sweet Lou. You and, <laughs> and, you know, he was, he was that guy for me. And he always been that guy, uh, right. even when I get to play with him. Um, and then I got to know Showbiz. Well, hang um, on, Paul. Before we oh. get before we get to Globe okay, Trot. Okay, 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 okay. I read you up said on you. Do. I okay. read up on you. Okay. Yeah, I, got, I, got, I got to kill your Wikipedia right now. Hang on. All right. Okay. Um, you were all state in high school. I mean, I played with you yeah. for what, 10, 12 years. <clears throat> and I never knew that you were that great of a player in high school in the state of Kentucky. You were all state. So yeah. uh who was recruiting? How come you didn't go to Kentucky, man? I mean, you all state. Well, we actually, actually, we were, I was verbally going to Kentucky. Uh, Lenny Hamilton. Uh, Who was the coach at Kentucky at the time? Uh, Joby Hall. Uh, Joby Hall. We went down there and, you know, was, that's when they had the, the lounge and, you know, Kenny, Kenny Walker and all them. I was down there with them uh, being recruited and verbally was going to Kentucky and basically signed in my senior year in 85. Yeah, 85. I graduated 86, but the um, Joby Hall left at the end of that year. Mm -hmm. And Eddie Sutton came in. And so when Eddie Sutton came in, he had his own recruits. And that year I graduated, uh, it was, again, the guy named Nick Sanford. Um, I think he was going. Shout out uh, to Nick Sanford. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Rex Chapman. Oh, yeah. Spelton, Spelton Spencer that went to Louisville and, and uh, 
uh, played in Utah and Reggie Henson. All of uh, you know those guys, a few more, but those guys really came out of state that year. Did you um, run into JB JB Brown at, at some point? JB Brown, I I seen JB Brown when he was at uh, Kentucky uh, Wesley. Right. Um, he was a little bit older than he, I think he was like two or three years older than me. Right. Um, and I um, think I, I I got called him with his senior year, and I would think I was maybe a freshman sophomore. Okay. When I, when where we played. Where did you with, end up? Where did you end up going to college and play played your? Collegiate? I ended. I went to Jacksonville State for a year, and then I ended up at Tennessee Wesleyan University, and, and okay. finished three years there. All right. Cool. Showbiz Jackson, what's Take up? Us back to Savannah. Go oh, get it. I sixteen. Used to play I, barefooting. Take I sixteen <laughs> and get you something to eat on the way because you ain't gonna see nothing coming from the town. <laughs> but freeze. What you just say? I say take I sixteen from Atlanta and go straight down the highway. You ain't gonna see nothing. Just make sure you have some video games because you ain't gonna see number trees till you get there. <laughs> Let's talk about that birth certificate too. Oh, there uh -oh. you go. Hey, hey, hey Mike. Hey, hey, that's hitting below the belt. <laughs> what so you want, what you want take, take us, you take want? us back, man. Take us back to Savannah, man. Who put the ball in your court? How did you become? Go get it. Hey, man. I mean, you know, before we had, you know, the light coming in in Savannah, man. You know, I used to go around and change the lights <laughs> in the neighborhood because, you know, they didn't have nobody to change. That's how, how I was jumping. <laughs> from the neighborhood the guys that was like five and six years older than me man you know i always hung around guys that was two or three years older than me and because my my talent level you know was was better than the guys that were my age so you know all the big guys were like you know older guys were like picking me to come play with their team because i was fast i was strong you know and uh that's where, you know, I got my skills from, man, just learning the game from, you know, some elders in the neighborhood, shooting on a goal with a bicycle rim nailed to the backboard. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Did you have uh, any brothers or sisters that were involved in the game? Maybe your father? Well, my father was a great athlete. He played football when he was in high school and, uh, you know, he was too short to play basketball. I got my height from my grandfather who was six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how tall was your father? My father was like around six, about five eleven, six feet even. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, he was <laughs> great, great, great football player. Couldn't play basketball early, so uh, you know, I, I you know I got the best of both worlds. You know, I got some football knowledge from him, and you know the height from my great grandfather. So, you know, that's that's where I got my skills from. You know, just. Just being around the old guys in the neighborhood, man, just learning the trade. Well, when you say learning the trade, there was uh, two great globetrotters from uh, your high school, from Savannah mm -hmm. and your high school, which was uh, Larry Gator Rivers and, and Tyrone Brown. They both went to uh, Beach High School where you attended. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, man, thank and they're a little bit older than you. So did you look up to them growing up? Of course, you know, I looked up to Gator Rivers because he's the first one that broke the mold for, you know, players out of Savannah to, you know, to be able to even be a part of the Harlem Globetrotters. Right. Uh, and ironically, uh, Gator Rivers, Tyrone Brown, myself, and also Bruce Capers, who also played with the Globetrotters, all four of us went to the same high school. And the coach, uh, Russell Ellington, was a legendary basketball coach at Beach High School. So we had five five guys that came from this one school to be able to be a part of this great organization that you know Bola Vet. don't forget Bola Vet. Bola Vet. you're right six you know so you know it's been you know it's, it's been a blessing you know just an honor just to have that many people come from one school to be able to do what we did you know Tyrone Brown of course he was a year above year before me uh he was a great you know point guard uh, for our high school and also Gator Rivers, you know, which was years, years and years and years before us. <laughs> you know, you know, he, you know, he kind of broke the mold when they made point guards in that in his era. So, you know, them guys, you know, I, I looked up to them and they, they taught me a lot. Cool. Real cool showbiz. All right. Michael Wild Thing Wilson. Hey man, I'm, I tell people I'm mild thing now. I ain't wild no more. I'm mild thing. Man. Mild thing. Okay. Before wild thing came into effect, take us back to Memphis, man. Tell us how you grew up in Memphis and who put the ball in your crib. 
and got you involved in the game that um, that made you famous? Otis. <laughs> I'm trying to get a. I'm trying to share this. <laughs> my bad, man. My bad, man. Uh, I don't honestly, man. I didn't start playing basketball until late. I, I did it like everybody else. I didn't start playing basketball till eighth grade. But I, I, I would always, I was always very athletic. I could run really fast. You know, I could jump really high. I was, you know, I was, so I just remember playing on a, on a. Shelby said he played on a wire, uh, on a rim, on a tree. But I started out with uh, one of my mom's hangers. You know what I mean? Making it in a circle and balling up some socks. You know what I mean? Um, but I, like I say, I started late. But I remember nobody really introduced me to it. But I, I'm sure everybody remembers this game when NC State beat the University of Houston. Oh, you didn't have to go there. You didn't have to go. <laughs> oh, sorry, buddy. But um, honestly, I was rooting for the University of Houston. But me too. Yeah, but it's it was something about that coach from North Carolina uh, State that made him play, man. I mean, he seemed like he went to war with his players, man, and uh, it, it made him feel like. A, they were in a family, man. And I remember that was the day I fell in love with basketball. Um, I wanted to be good enough to play for that man, with Jimmy Val, Valvano, man. Uh, he was uh, <clears throat> he was such an inspiration in me at a young age, man. I remember it was a, it was snowing outside and we didn't have to go to school, but we could go if we wanted to. But I wanted to go so bad after watching that game and watching him I walked through the snow to school just to play basketball, man. And I mean, I guess it took off from there. You know what I mean? That was my first introduction to basketball for uh, Coach V. That's what's up. Well, I tell you, with, with your athleticism, when did you first start dunking? Because I remember when you joined the Globe Trotters, I had never seen anything like you before. He was eight. He's, he was eight. Yeah. So. <laughs> And, you know, I'm kind of getting in some of the questions that people have early, but when did you uh, notice that I had that you had this explosive athleticism? Even before the first I, time you dunked. Well, first time I dunked was eighth grade. It was a two hand dunk. Somebody passed it to me down low. I just went up, dunked like my first time in eighth grade. I was How about, tall were you in eighth grade? About six two, and I just went up and dunked two hand. But even before I could jump really high, I was always really quick off my feet. I would block a lot of shots. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, it, it just became high. I, you know, I, I, it's just a God-given talent, man. I, I say uh, everybody has some kind of talent. And I, I, I guess that was my talent, man, be able to jump so high. There's a difference between, yes. there's difference <laughs> between being dunkers. There are a lot of dunkers. But I was a leaper. You know, you got these guys that are jumping real high, do all these fancy dunks. They're not blocking no shots. They're not getting no rebounds or anything like that. So that's the difference. It's a difference. Were you fast? Excuse me? Were you real fast, Mike? Yeah, I was fast, man. And uh, Showbiz, I think I could have had you, man. They actually, I'm going to tell you something. They wanted me to play football in college. I was like, are you crazy? <laughs> 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 I actually ran a... Four two nine in college, and yeah. they said, "I said I'm not playing football." And the coach said, uh, "We'll only put you in in uh, third down crucial situations." I was like, "Man, that's when the defense is crazy on third down." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "There's no way." But you about <laughs> buck sixty five then you wasn't that exactly. So <laughs> I mean, you imagine it's not one of them hits you see coming. It's one of them <laughs> blindside blocks. You know what I mean? That you don't see coming. So hey, that made me quit football in high school. Yes. Hey, and look, I, I went out for a, I went out for a pass in high school, called it, running down the sideline. Dude came from nowhere. Boom! Look, I was looking at the helmet like this. My <laughs> uh, ear hole. My, I said, oh no. After that game, I said, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. I just show, think showtime is out of here. Yeah. I just think it's disrespectful, man, for me to just think I can. Just because I'm a good athlete, I can go out there and play football. Showbiz knows, I think, for, for a fact that you know you can be athletic, but that's two different, that's two different animals. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's two different animals. Then you got to have a coach that's gonna, gonna uh, put your skill 
you know, where you can be successful. You know what I mean? You know, case in point, when I was going to Savannah State, you know, I played football in Savannah State. And uh, you know, after my sophomore year, man, that would made me change back my career to basketball because me and the coach would see eye to eye. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of high school, you, you saw the numbers. You saw the numbers. Hold on, and- hold on let me talk about that. Let me talk about that, Mike. Um, you know, when I did my research, you were all state in Tennessee. Yeah. Your senior year, 25 points a game, 15 rebounds, and six blocks per game. But as a junior, you set a state record with 271 blocks, averaging 8.4 blocks a game. Who you playing against? Damn. That was a- <laughs> hey, hey, I. <laughs> Who you say, Showbiz? Who was playing against the Smurfs? <laughs> he had all them blocks. <laughs> You gotta think about this, man. That was, uh, dude. My- you never took a charge. You never. You had. I bet you was uh, somebody. Come on, fast break. Go ahead, shoot. I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, that's a. I think that's a. I don't know. I think that record still stands. I hopefully it does. Oh. I, I don't see. I, I have never heard nobody averaging eight point five blocks a game. That's crazy. That's crazy. But, that's uh, I mean, who I was playing against, man. You gotta think. This who was in high school uh, doing my. Uh, he was a senior. He was playing with Penny Hardaway, you know, of course. Uh, Randy Carter, he was a D1 player, played at uh, uh, Minnesota, man. It's too many people to name, man. That year, it was very competitive in Memphis. Very competitive basketball, uh, 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 high school basketball, rather, I would say, in Memphis, man. Very competitive. It's usually always So how, how'd you do in uh, the matchup with Penny? Penny has got to be, what, a couple years older than you, right? Yeah, he's a few years older than me. That's the first guy I've seen six, seven is, is quick. You know, most guys, you know, you get that height, they they walk in like a big man. They, they you know, they, they walk in, they lumber, they move slow. There's a difference between being fast and being quick. <clears throat> I was fast, but I wasn't quick. And fast doesn't do you any good. Unless you run from the police. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He so, grew up in Orange Mound now. <laughs> yeah. Benny, hey man, was an unbelievable talent. If it was, if it was okay to go out of, uh, go straight to the NBA from high school, he would have went, man. That guy was, he was that good, man. I, I, I've never oh, seen anything like that in my life, man. I mean, I used to ask him, man, like, what are you thinking? What do you see? And w- when we talk, man, I think it's a discussion is everybody sees it like him, like we see it, but people like him and Magic, they see it way before we see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, they be able to make that decision before we make that decision. And so that's what made that guy great, man. His I cousin mean, was good too. I forgot his name. His cousin that came out to play with us one year. One year. Marcus, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so I, I was, it was a lot of talent, man. I was just undersized. In high school, man, they didn't do me any justice, man. I had three different coaches. 10th grade year I had a coach, 11th grade year I had a coach, a senior year I had a different coach. You know what I mean? So I really didn't have any stability coming out of uh, of high school. And so didn't really have anybody in my corner to kind of, you know, guide me or like Paul said, I didn't really have a good foundation. My foundation was kind of all over the place. Mm-hmm. Well, Mike, well, let me tell you, I mean, these numbers, 25, 15 and six blocks, that's some six serious points. numbers. So who came, who came at you with that bag of money to go to school, right. man? Who came with that shoe box? Hey, hey son, hey, now we're digging into something else. <laughs> Nobody really, man. I was recruited, man. It was just funny, man. I remember, I'm not going to say the school. I visited the school, man. <laughs> the coaches actually, they locked me, they they called me to the to the office, and all of them, and they locked the door behind them. All of them was in the office, man, and they were trying to pressure me to sign, like, right there. I mean, I had a... I had I had to be about 17 years old, man. No father figure, anything like that. So, I mean, I almost signed, you know. But, uh, but that's the kind of pressure you, uh, I was going through. Nobody really gave me anything, man. I went on a few visits. They didn't give you no Nintendo that day. No, man. Uh, I no rims. My mind made up at first, man. I changed, man. I actually signed to go to University of Tennessee. I wanted to play with Allen Houston. 
Mm. You know what I mean? I wanted to play for his dad, man. Really nice guy, man. You know, we grew up kind of poor, man. I always tell this story. My first time eating with a, like eating steak with a knife and fork was on their visit. I was about 17, 18 years old. And I was afraid. I was looking at them. I was like, man, I hope I get this right. So I was looking at <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? And, wow. you know, I, uh, I pulled it off so they couldn't tell. But I signed to go to University of Tennessee, uh, but I didn't pass my uh, ACT, my standardized test. So uh, I had to go to I had to go to JUCO route. So you know, uh, well, you, at least you ate you ate steak before before I did. I thought I was eating steak for three years till I, I found out it was a uh, spam. Oh That's my god! <laughs> but, but if you're a curly boot, if you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know, you don't know. You thought that spam was it, wasn't it? Well, it was it too fried. What? <laughs> yeah, so uh make my spam medium well, please. <laughs> so uh after doing two years at, at uh at JUCO, uh they changed coaches at Tennessee. I was still going to go to Tennessee, but uh I think they got rid of Coach Houston and uh we so, go home who's yawning. Yeah, Ooh, so uh I didn't. I didn't end I think up. They got that. Kevin O'Neill, maybe, right? Yeah, I, it was Kevin O'Neill. Like and uh, and so I decided to stay at home, man. So I, I stay, stayed at home. Probably my best decision, you know, to stay at home. You know, Whoa. one of the reasons I did uh, stay at home. It was funny, man. All of us on this call, we travel the world. I was scared to leave home. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I signed with a JUCO in Texas called South Plain. It was a great JUCO, man. Uh, Bo Outlaw went there, was going there at the time. Corey Beck, the guy that played at Arkansas. Uh, Dwight Stewart, that played at Arkansas. All the Memphis guys, uh, they had a couple, of lo a lot of recruits, man. And I was supposed to be the one coming in at South Plains, man. But I signed. I was supposed to be going to the day of. I wouldn't even answer the phone when they called. They started calling. I was like, I'm not going. So, yeah, I chickened out, man. So you you go to University of Memphis and and uh, you get to play with some brothers that were from from Memphis and you guys had a, quite the bonding if I remember and and made it to the Sweet Sixteen and had some memorable games. So tell us about some of the guys you played with at Memphis. Oh man, we had a really deep team, especially my junior year. Man, we had about we had eight guys on our team that at one point during the season had a twenty point game. So we were very deep. And uh, it's funny, man, I posted the other day, like, what is a two-way player? But everybody used to look at us because we had some horses, man. We had some high flies. Memphis was known for the high flies and running the floor. Man, but we would get after it on defense, man. Uh, we had Chris Garner, man, our point guard. He played in the NBA for a little while, had a, a successful career overseas. He led, the, uh, he led the conference during that time in steals. And I still may be – the all-time steals leader at Memphis. We had Cedric Henderson uh, that played a few years. He was drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, he was a, a, a slasher, like a Scottie Pippen type player, can guard the 2-3-L-4. Mm -hmm. uh, we had me, uh, we had David Vaughn that got drafted for the Orlando Magic, and my man Lorenzen Wright, God rest his soul. We played, we had block parties in there. Mm -hmm. We were all, all three of us were blocking shots, so Chris could go for those yeah. steals because we knew he had that. Yeah, I remember uh, we were at the Hall of Fame when the Globetrotters got inducted. I want to say it was 2001, 2000 maybe. And we had to go to this hospitality room. And me and you, Mike, was trying to get something to eat. We were starving. And yeah. Jim Nance from CBS Sports came up. And he said hello to me, but he really wanted to talk to you and talk about that game between you guys and Allen Iverson in which uh, – it was a, oh, yeah. a classic game. So tell everybody about uh, oh, that that, time, uh, we met we met Jim Nance and he talked about that game. Oh yeah, it was Houston, nice, man. Uh, University of Houston. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he um, the game was really good, man. Allen Iverson was fired up because the year before we held him to like sixteen points. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he was fired up. He was hot. So. Him, uh, so the game started, man, and I mean, we're talking back and forth, you know what I mean? Nobody's giving an inch. And I never forget this story, man. I gotta put this story out there on live, man. 
our two guard named Mingo Johns, he got in foul trouble. So a sub came in off the bench, his name was John Gales, big stocky guy, you know, not too quick, but you know, stocky. And they took the ball and Allen Iverson had the ball at the top of the key. He looked and saw who was on him. This was his exact words. He said, oh, watch this. <laughs> watch this. And he, uh, he went up and gave him his famous killer crossover. And when he hit the shot, he said, bam. I said, wow, it's going to be a long night. And it was a long night. So, but man, it was, it was an incredible game, man. I had some, we had some incredible dunks. It was a back and forward, man. Uh, they ended up beating us. They were team were a little deeper than us uh, my senior year. We didn't re-up like I thought we should have on our senior year. But it was one play, man, where I went up to dunk and I missed the dunk. And Lorenzen caught my dunk. You know, like I dunked and the ball went in. I tried to dunk and the ball went out. your missed dunk. He dunked my missed dunk. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So uh, I think we should have been a little bit more successful. We ended up losing in the first round my senior year to Drexel, man, um, with Malik Rose. You know, he's a dog. Malik Rose is a dog, dog. Um, <clears throat> But uh, the success of the Sweet 16, I think it it the success kind of it kind of messed us up, man. I think we was playing a little bit more selfish than we should have, you know. I, uh, I think everybody was kind of like, okay, you know, this is me time or my time, and we we wasn't the same team we were the year before. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, you know, and it's funny with basketball. Two two years later, well, the year after I left, that's when my uh, my coach. God rest his soul, Larry Finch. He lost a job at the University of Memphis. He went from two years to Sweet 16 from a, a year and a half later to losing his job. Wow. Yeah, I know there's no love in that game out there. We, we yeah. really ain't no love. Hired to be fired, they call it. Yeah. yeah. You All right, I gotta game. go they say to- it's uh, only good as your last game? <laughs> it's last. Yeah. I gotta uh, go to my man down on my left, Sweet Lou Dunbar. The man. The when main. I joined the team All hail the King. in 1988, All hail the King. when I joined the team in 1988 as a rookie, I was blessed to be on the on the same squad with him, and I was I was very young. I used to sit in the back of the bus, mind my own business, and every once in a while he would come back and sit in my seat with me, and tell me things about uh, his career and what to look look for, what to look out for, all those things. I'll never forget the conversations that we had. But I remember you telling me about growing up in Minden, Louisiana. Yes. And I always thought, okay, damn, hopefully we get to play in Minden. But he had to tell me, we Minden, no Minden is a small town. The closest thing <laughs> might have been Shreveport. Am I right? Yeah. Shreveport. So, that sounds like Harlem County. Yeah. So... <laughs> I remember Lou telling me that he never had a pizza until he went to the University of Houston. <laughs> so I got a feeling your part of town was a little bit different. So with that being said, let me be quiet. Audrey gave him his first pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say it, Lou. You were the number one player in the state of Louisiana, your junior and senior year from my, from what I read in all the articles, I thought I knew everything about you, but I learned some some things that, uh, that made me smile. I mean, 25 points per game, uh, let's see. No, I'll take, I'll take that back. I shorted you three points, 28 points per game. Your team was 34 and one your senior year won the state championship in the in the first year that you guys were able to compete for the great Louisiana state championship because of segregation that they didn't allow your school which was an all black school to compete for the state championship i thought that was amazing to uh to read but once they did allow you you guys almost ran the table it and was you were the star and the number one prospect in the state of Louisiana and all American. So with that being said, man, take us back and tell us how you got up to that point growing up in Minden, Louisiana. Uh, for me, man, 
uh, baseball was the big thing for us coming up, man. You know, I mean, Webster had some great basketball team, but we didn't know anything about that. Me not coming up. And so we used to play baseball. And when I got ready to come, come into junior high school, my the junior high school coach lived across the street from me. And they used to call me Rabbit. You know, everybody called me Rabbit. And then people said, why do you call me Rabbit? Because you're fast. I said, no, look at my ears. <laughs> I had big ears. They started calling me Rabbit when he was playing baseball. And uh, so <laughs> coach, he said, he said, Rabbit, he said, you need to start playing because you're coming in junior high school. And so I, my dad gave me some money for Christmas. And um, I went out and bought me a basketball on go. Man, I was the happiest kid. I was just happy. My old man said, well, he said what you can do with that money? I said, well, man, I bought me a basketball and a goal. He said, you must be a damn fool. <laughs> <laughs> you could have got you some clothes and some shoes with that money. <laughs> <laughs> and my old man was a, a deputy sheriff. So at that time, man, I, I put up the basketball goal and, and man, I used to play day and night. Wasn't no like guys who were going to the wreck. We had no wreck at that time. You know, we didn't have no concrete. We played outside on the dirt. And the rain, the guy lived um, right next door to me. Mr. Odom had a bulldog. And we had, back then, wasn't no big old stout fence. We had one of them little fence you push down and get over and go get your stuff. And so uh, we used to play, man, the ball go over there. We had to distract the bulldog while somebody go to the other end to get the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we started, man. And uh, and I was always a taller kid. You know, my old man was 6'9", so I was a tall kid. And yeah. the high school guys, Used to some of the high school, one of the high school players lived right up the street from me. He used to stop by and play with me. And you know, I was out there, rain, shine, sleet, dark, you know, it didn't matter. I was out there playing. And so that's how I got started, man. And um, we got to junior high school. Uh, it's funny, the, the coach, he, he used to put two chairs, two folding chairs together. We used to have a layup line. We had to jump over those folding chairs to do layup. That's how we got started, man. And we played and, uh, didn't lose a game in junior high school. Uh, so I started off in junior high school. And I was a freshman in high school. We lost our first game. Boy, I cried like a baby. I didn't know what that was about. I thought I was a little trotter already, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I how, tall, how tall were you as a freshman in high school? I was 6'7", about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, wow. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. you know, and, you know, and, and that's another thing for me. I used to always dribble the ball, you know. Like I say, you used to dribble through holes, you know, and coming up. So I figured, you know, if this guy can do it, I can do it. So, you know, that was another thing. And back then, that day show, before you say anything, I was, you know, I was thin as a rail. I, you know, I didn't start gaining weight till I was 33 years old. <laughs> when I got to University of Houston, I was 6'9", 195 pounds, 200 pounds. And when I left, I was 205. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway... Uh, that's how I got started, man, and, and playing, playing, and uh, my old man, you know, he's a deputy sheriff. You know how them cops lead the football the buses to the games and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. So by the time I got to be a sophomore, he was the one leading them buses. But when I got that basketball, I was a damn fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but why, I mean, why ain't none of your coaches ever taught you the other art of the game, Sweet Lou? What you mean, passing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, so I led the team in assists too. Now, wait a minute now. Uh, you hey, did. Lewis. Yes. And wait you know, minute. But here's here's the thing for me. You guys had a, the advantage of me. But for me, when I got to when I got to high school, they took Duncan out of the game. Mm -hmm. So I never had the chance to dunk. You know, uh, in high school, well, I dunked once, and I, we were playing against our uh, men in high my senior year. A uh, guy went up on me, so I had to dunk the ball, keep him falling. That was the only time I dunked in high school. Wow. And so they took the, the dunking out of the game when I got to high school, and they put it back in when I left college. <laughs> wow. That, wow. That whole eight-year swing, man, we couldn't do no dunking. Mike, I couldn't do no Mike Wilson's. But the finger <laughs> roll was put in. <laughs> That's what they can do is finger why, roll. <laughs> why, you, why did you choose the University of Houston? Well, I, I had a few, few places, uh, and I had – had narrowed it down actually to, uh, I came out to visit University of Houston and uh, they sent a private plane at me to come get me. So listen to this, you're going you to like this. So they sent a private plane. A good friend of mine sitting there was and Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones played with the Rockets, uh, Lakers, yeah. and uh, Bristol, Bristol, um, and Atlanta. 
But so they sent Sydney and Dwight Jones down this private plane to get me. So we flying back, we got in Houston. And I said, man, I, we got uh, flying in Houston. I was looking up in there, I was looking around the cloud. I thought that was cloud. They said, man, that's small. What you talking about? I said, cause no cloud. <laughs> <laughs> about no small, we ain't got no small in Minden. <laughs> You know, so that was the first time I ever been on a plane too, on a private plane. And then I had an official visit. It's too late. They can't get the university. It's not too late now. But then I had an official yeah. visit. You know? <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and then they was having the tournament out here. UCLA was here. Sydney Wicks and those guys were here. And I really had a great time. And the other team that I went to um, that I had was Florida State at that time. They had a they had a great program down there. Hugh Durham was the coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so uh, we're getting to this a little later. And my I won a baseball championship playing with the, you know in high school. I know I'm getting a little ahead of that boot, but my, my so my senior year, I had to go. My dad made me go to Florida State because I told him I was coming. But we had a baseball playoff game. They lost. They wanted to kill me. I said, get him, get kill him. <laughs> <laughs> So, and uh, that was the first time I had an oyster jug. He said, you ever had oysters? I said, no, nah, I, I took an oyster. <laughs> Straight to the bathroom and get rid of that bad boy. <laughs> but I love them now. And so, no, no, no. and also, the, the another reason, the University of Houston had High Five Pavilion was brand new. It was a beautiful place they were playing in, and, and uh, Florida State. Looked like Bo Ragley High School gym. That was, that was another reason. <laughs> okay. well, Lewis, I did see you being the number one prospect, All American, that LSU didn't really recruit blacks. In fact, they had their first black player. Uh, I can't oh, remember. I think Collis Temple or something. Yeah. Was his name. Yeah. And um, he, he became the first black player in 1970. 70-71 uh, season, which was your your senior year, and then I saw that Elvin, great Elvin Hayes and Don Chaney were the two best players in the state of Louisiana, Louisiana State, when they had Pistol Pete, Chris yep. Maravich as the coach, wouldn't take them, so they had to go over to the University of Houston, so that since uh, LSU had a black player when you were a senior in high school, did Press Maravich Pistol Pete's father, did he try to recruit you? Yes, yeah, yeah, he tried to recruit me. He sent me a pair of those pro cans back in the day. And back <laughs> then, back then, Judge, I was wearing like a 13 or 14. He sent me some 17. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, with these breasts, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, he tried to recruit me. But I never did go to, uh, I never had a visit to LSU. I never went to LSU. And, um, after I went to Houston, man, I was pretty much sold. You know, I, another guy who recruited me a lot was Dale Brown. He was at Utah at the time. But Dale, man, Dale was caught hitting me up. I had more letters from Dale. You know, we were pen pal with me. Like, he was pen pal the way he was right. You know? <laughs> so, you get to the University of Houston. I saw your career averages of 22 points a game, seven rebounds, four assists. Who were some of the great players? I know you played for the legendary Guy Lewis. Who were some of the great players that you uh, played with and against at the University of Houston? At the University, uh, who I played against, I tell you, well, like I told you, they took Duncan out of the game. So, you know, we were still competitive. And uh, uh, I played with Dwight Jones. Dwight Jones one of the guys who played in the 72 Olympics, you know. So he, he came from the University of Houston. Uh, Tom Henderson, who went to San Jack, played in Hawaii, who also played in the Olympics, all these guys. Um, and, 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 you know, my sophomore year at Houston, back then, freshmen couldn't play uh, varsity basketball anyway. We had to have a freshman team. And so we had a huge freshman team. So when we got to be sophomore, we had the tallest team in the country. We averaged 6'9". And that was the first year uh, I came off the bench playing. And that's when they started calling me Sweet Lou, actually, at the university when I started coming off the bench. And um, and so God put me in at guard. That's when I started playing guard. We averaged 6'9". The other guy was 6'4". I was 6'9". And the two forwards and center was 6'9", 6'10", 6'10". So we wow. got to call us the big bunch, you know. Wow. So we played against uh, Bo Lamar. A lot of people don't remember Bo Lamar, but Bo Lamar used to shoot that bad boy from the kitchen. Wow. 
Yeah, so uh, we played them, and uh, I actually my my sophomore year I, we beat them at Houston, and uh, at the buzz I hit a jump shot to beat them at the buzz, and, and we had to play them in the NCAA first round, and he beat us at the buzz, you know, and uh, uh, my biggest rivalry though coming out of Louisiana, you know, myself, me and Robert Parrish grew up playing against each other. Wow. So that, that was a big thing. They would always say, who's going to win the state championship, Dunbar or Paris? And you said something earlier about, you know, we couldn't compete because, you know, they had, they had a state tournament for the Blacks and they had a state tournament for the Whites in 70. But in 71, that's when they integrated. And so we had the opportunity. And we were 3A back then when we were in the Black Conference. But uh, when we got to the White Conference, they put us to 2A. And so... But we took everything that came in front of us, Judge. Everything came in front of us. We knocked them down. <laughs> hey, Judge. What was the two conferences? Mm -hmm. What Not was the two conferences? The triple A batteries and double A. You all in the rocks. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't know if Curly, Curly, you ask him. I don't know if you were going to ask him. I don't know if you mind, Curly. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. This is your show. Go ahead. Branch. <laughs> Branch wanted me to ask one of uh, Globetrotters living in Houston, man. It's not, you know, I'm glad you're a brother. I'm glad you did. You are a legend. Why did you choose the Globetrotters? I know you had options. Well, actually, they chose me. Uh, after I left after I left University of Houston, I was drafted by Philly. And uh, so we never came to terms on, on anything. So I went to Europe. And um, I'm, back then, you know, they wouldn't have them that long money back then, Mike. So, yeah. and so, so I ended up going to Europe, and I so I, I went to uh, Italy first, and I went to a place called Pedro down on the Adriatic Sea, and uh, but they were looking for a center, and I really wasn't a center. So they had a guy in Lugano, Switzerland, and that was center Ken Brady. So they we swapped places. And I went to Lugano, Switzerland. He came down and played center for the team in Italy. And it was right across the Italian border. As a matter of fact, it's right across from Lake Como. You know where your man Clooney lives, right across the lake yeah. where Clooney lives. And anyway, um, I when I got there, uh, for the first couple of months, I could only eat pizza and spaghetti because that's the only thing I could say. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what that was. And so anyway, uh, we I played there, and, and man, it was it was. It was like going back to childhood because we played with nylon balls and they had wooden backboards, you know, in the gym, you know, but we won the Swiss championship. So we won the Swiss championship. And after that, um, we played in the European cup and uh, we, I went to Czechoslovakia. I went to Italy. Uh, we played against uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv, uh, Real Madrid and a team in Italy called Four Scan 2. And we played against Four Scan 2 in Italy. It was the first time I touched a leather ball, just since I had been over there. Yeah. I gave him 50. Woo! <laughs> and, and we lost by 20. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that was the first time I touched a leather ball, man, and we went off. And, and I played with a guy, a Mexican guy named Manuel Roger. Um, greatest Mexican player I ever seen, man. He was he was an older guy. He was about 33 or so at the time. Uh, like I said, I had 50, Manuel had 33, and we lost by 20. But, you know, this guy could still jump. He could jump up and shoot. They beat him on the arm. He played in Italy for years, so you know he could play. You yeah. the uh, Mexican player you ever seen? Huh? The <laughs> Mexican player you ever seen? <laughs> Speak English, show. Is that the greatest Mexican player you said you ever seen? <laughs> yeah, I ain't seen many. <laughs> Name another one. Name another one. Yeah. Name another one. Yeah. Yeah. You got, who you got on? You just gonna discount Curly. Hey, boy, yeah. I ain't seen nothing about that. <laughs> Don't do that, man. I ain't gonna let you. I ain't gonna let you disrespect Curly like that. <laughs> wow, I got you, bro. I knew he was gonna say that. <laughs> hey, he was one of the best Mexican I ever seen. Love it, man. <laughs> so, and after that, man, I came back. I came back home, Mike, and I came back home. Uh, and I signed a free agent contract with the Houston Rockets. Mm -hmm. So I went to LA and played in the summer pro league with them. And, and they played me sparingly here and there, you know. And whenever I played, I thought I did pretty good. And during that time, a guy from the Globetrotters came up to me and, and said, hey, man, would you want to come to Globetrotters training camp? That was Ron Stern on Doc. Oh, boy. And so uh, I said, yeah, man, because I was tired. You know, I was 
Uh, actually, me and Babyface Page was out there together too. Babyface was out there too. Yeah. And so uh, I was just tired of just, you know, being kind of pushed to the side. I wanted to play. I was ready to play. Mm -hmm. And I believe me, I, I played a lot after that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know and then a lot of people say man you know this probably was my calling you know because you know you know how we are you know we get yeah. along we like to have fun and so we played the game we had fun so we did did it both so. man, i believe everybody on this call man it, it, it's been our calling man you know yeah. because you know god don't make no mistakes yeah mike wilson mike wilson is a thief you know, oh. a ream thief. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> from, hey, from, from day one, huh, sweet? Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, you remember that time you went in the circle, did everybody ream? Yeah. <laughs> hey, at this point, hey, man, just go ahead and jump in and just <laughs> tell everybody how you got to the Globetrotters. Just jump yeah. on in, man. Yeah, well, that's how I got. And then so uh, I was invited to training camp. And uh, actually, I missed missed the first training camp because we had an All Star game. A friend of mine, Warren McVay, put an All Star game here in Houston. Doc, Doc McGinnis, and those guys were here, and I missed my flight. And so the the next day, I had to catch another flight. And uh, oh, we well, yeah, Judd. We uh -oh. <laughs> we hear you. What's wrong? Your eyes went out. Hush, <laughs> show. <laughs> cheep, 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 cheep. We can see you. We, <laughs> we see anyway, you in there. So anyway, I missed the flight, and so we went to training camp down Sierra Vista, Arizona, Fort Huachuca. So when I came in, Babyface picked me up at the airport, and we had practice. And so we was playing, practicing, practicing. So uh, I was bringing the ball up, and I threw a behind-the-back pass to a guy named General Lee Holman up on the basket for a layup. Melock says, stop, that's enough. I've seen enough. And after that, I was invited to uh, Globe Trial Training Camp, the veterans camp. That was Melock the coach, player coach at that time? Yes, sir. Okay. Player coach. And Marcus Haynes was the player coach for the other team. Wow. And, you know, back then, uh, we wore Converse and, and Marcus' team wore Adidas. So, you know, this what was day? This was, Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Y'all was y'all was in in the in the rivals. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But that's what how I got started, boo. Wow. That's cool. Love that, it. But, oh, another thing, your man Tex Harrison, because I hadn't signed. I was trying to hold off for a little money. Tex said, uh, son. <laughs> say son, what you gonna do? These people offering you this money. You better come on. <laughs> I said, okay, coach. So, so that's, and I end up signing with the Trotters. And the other thing, uh, Marie Lenahan, I know y'all heard stories of Marie. She was still in the Globe Trotters office. She worked, used to be Abe's girl. And she's still in the Globe Trotters office. She said, what number you want to wear? And so I knew Curly was wearing 22. I wore 22 in college. So I said, uh, number zero. And so when I got there, I had number 41. So she listened to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, how'd you get yeah. to the Globetrotters? Uh, when I left, when I came to Tennessee Wesleyan, I had an agent in uh, Houston. And I was playing down at, at Fondy Rec Center. Um, and I got, I think I, I got hurt the first year. And I got down there the year after that. Um, that's when I met uh, Tex and uh, Reggie. Uh, Charles Tex Harrison, the coach. Yeah, Charles Tex, the legend. Um, Reggie Dixon, airman. Um, I met them playing at the Fondy. You know, that's where, matter of fact, you know, Mike, going back on Mike's story, uh, Penny Hardaway, that's the first time I met Penny. He came down, they were, you know, they was giving all his praises about Penny Hardaway, Penny Hardaway, Penny Hardaway. I was like, who is this Penny Hardaway? I know, I know he's good. I mean, who is he? Now that joke came in there. I said, nah, I know who Penny Hardaway is now. Yeah, he was serious. But uh, so from that standpoint, um, that was a year that they were going through the bankruptcy uh, piece. Uh, and they were going to bring me to uh, trials, but they, they only went to, they went to one team. They went to one team and 
one uniform, the one piece uniform. So they we were <laughs> ain't going to that part. But the uh and but the next year, uh man, the year Manny Jackson brought it, they uh bought the team. I came in from there and with the tryouts and and thank God I made it and the rest is history. Right on. Showbiz Jackson, how'd you get to the Globe Trotters? Everybody knows about that pipeline from Savannah. So tell us how you got to the Globe Trotters. On the plane and coach. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, but uh, I got I got to the Globe Trotters, man, after coming out of the Air Force. And uh, you know, I, I you know, I, I was uh home, uh, you know, uh, out of the service and uh still looking for um, uh, something to do. And uh one of my uh like I said, my former our former teammates, uh Tyrone Brown, who went to Beach High School with me, he was home that summer. He had just came off a tour and we was up at the gym playing basketball and he was asking me what was I doing. I said, you know, nothing right now. You know, I'm just, you know, just home relaxing, trying to get something to do. <clears throat> and he said, Well, man, you know, Globe Trials uh training camp coming up, man. You know, you think you want to try for the Globe Trials? I said, You wanna ask me that again? <laughs> so he said <laughs> He said, yeah, man. He said, you know, we looking for they looking for showmans, right? So I said, yeah, man. I said, you know, that'd be great. If you, you know, get me the opportunity. So that's how I got the opportunity to come to camp. Uh, you know, through him uh that summer when I was home, just didn't have anything to do, man. I was looking for employment. I didn't want to go back to driving trucks again. I didn't want to go back to mixing semen and laying bricks. I didn't want to go back to roofing. Uh <laughs> You know, I wanted to go ahead and just do something, man, which I, which I love, you know. So, uh, yeah, he gave me the opportunity, man, to come to camp, man. And uh, like I said, man, I came there and kept my gun cocked, made the team, and, you know, the rest is history. Yes, buddy. Wait a minute, Showbiz, hold on, hold on. So you was laying concrete? Roof. You ever seen his hand? Barefoot. Driving a truck. So that's what I was going to say. Hold on. That's why they got the, uh, stamp, the stamp concrete these days. Oh, no, dude, no, dude, no, 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 I didn't come up with the stucco idea. <laughs> the the, st the stamp yeah, concrete. You <laughs> don't have no footprints. <laughs> they literally, he walking on there. <laughs> All right, Mike, oh. how, Mike, how'd you get to the Globetrotters, man? Um, my senior year, man, um, I had an agent. Didn't know what I wanted to do. I was afraid to go overseas. Uh, Cause 96 um, was arguably one of the greatest drafts ever. You know, when I came out, arguably, you know, you can say, you know, that year, I mean, from, from the first round to the last pick, you know what I mean? It was some great talent there. So um, I had an agent, I was scared to go overseas because I heard so many horror stories about people not getting paid about, uh, you know. Hey, true. That's true, Mike. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so I was just in my room, man, in my dorm room, man, and the phone rang, man, and it was uh, the, uh, the past owner, it was Manny Jackson, and he called me. And he uh, called me, he's like, man, we want to uh, invite you down, man. We, we playing a game in Florida. We want to invite you down. You know, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. You know, didn't even think about it. Uh, so he called again. So, yeah, I guess my agent... Uh, got something together with him. And my first interaction with the Globetrotters was actually uh, meeting Paul. It was Paul, Juan, Versher, uh, I think it was Orlando Antigua. It was somebody else. Uh, but they flew me down to, uh, to Phoenix and we did the uh, Globetrotter commercial. I don't know if Paul, you remember that. That was my first uh, time with the Globetrotter. We did the Globetrotter wow. commercial. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know I didn't know how to do one trick with the ball. I was the the, the one that, 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 the passer. I was gonna do the dunk at the end, but I do remember this. I know they called me a thief, but I remember watching uh, Paul and Juan. I remember watching those guys handle that basketball, and it was just amazing, man. I could not believe that they could do those things with the basketball. So uh, I took it upon myself to be a student, to learn. So when I got to training camp, my first year, Showbiz wasn't with me uh, my first year. He came like later. But my, my, my first year, the first person I ever saw at training camp, the Globe Trotter that I remember, was the great Billy Ray Hobley. Super Trotter. Botner. 
Yeah. He had on this silk shirt. Y'all know that silk shirt that you had used to have on. <laughs> he had on that silk shirt, man. I said, I remember that guy, man, because he wore the headband around his neck. Yeah. Uh, but I remember uh, watching him, watching Sweet Lou, watching Paul, watching Curly. I just remember I wanted to be one of those dudes in that circle. You know, I know it's, you know, we talk about how easy it is to get in the circle now, but I wanted to be one of those dudes, man. I really wanted to be one of those dudes, man. So Sweet Lou called me because he'll he be in the back doing something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go out to that circle and I do it. He'd be like, man, what? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Dope is I did a ring. I, I done stole this ring, Paul. I mean, Curly. I got something a little bit from all you guys. My circle actually that I do, it's a little bit of everybody. It's a little bit of uh, uh, Sweet Lou. It's a little bit of uh, actually Barry Harder. It's a little bit of uh, Billy Ray. It's it's pretty much everybody, man. So I took a little bit about off everybody. So imitation. I'll tell you one thing. You couldn't you couldn't take nothing in front of Billy. You couldn't oh, take no. none. Of, you couldn't take any of Billy Ray's reams in front of him. <laughs> not. Yeah. That you could, hey, do could not throw a bad head. pass you and don't not head. wear the headband around your neck. That's not. <laughs> oh, that was up. <laughs> oh, man, I, I hey, was not giving the bad pass in the circle. Oh, yeah. no. Hey, Judge. Hey, Judge. judge. I remember um, when Manny put this super circle together. Curly, you remember we were talking about this a while back, the super circle. All you guys were in it. I think Barry Harder was in it. Uh, Billy Ray was in it. I think it was like an eight man circle because he wanted everybody his best ball handlers in there. I don't know if you guys remember that, but I was like, man, I want to be in there so bad, man. I'll never forget that, man. You remember that, Curly? Yeah, I do. I, I, you know, one thing about getting in that circle, it's hard to get you back out. It's hard yeah. to get back out. I've seen a couple guys get in and then somebody bumped them off and, and uh, that's basically the end of your career once you get pulled out that circle. Well, you know, that, we had the ream off. We had to have the ream off. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah, I remember was, my, uh, my rookie year, I was with Curly, Sweet Lou, Ozzy. I mean, basically all the uh, – Tree Gordon. Tree Gordon. Oh, you weren't getting in. Oh, no. dog. You, no, you weren't getting in. It was – uh, who else was in there? Uh, uh, Saucy Sarge. He was in Bye. there. <laughs> 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 hey. You wasn't getting, you wasn't getting nowhere close to circle. Like somebody get hurt, and then you had like all the rookies. You had like three rookies. It was myself, Reggie, uh, D uh Reggie, uh, Perkins. Perkins, and uh, Mario Green, Mario. Mario Green. Everybody was in the. Everybody being the, in the. Matter of fact, Billy Ray Hobley came and was in mid season. Mid season. Oh my God, you were not. I mean, duh. You would not get in that circle. Somebody get hurt, then you try to get in. And I remember the first time I got in, Lord, how mercy. You talk about nervous. They And they don't give it to you. Sweet Lou, all them, they don't give it to you. For, I mean, from the get. <laughs> Joe, are you, are, what, what, what's wrong? You, you, you're nervous? You, hey, don't you go up here and mess the circle up. Now that, you know, they just giving it to you, boy. You, are you scared? You sweating? And it, and I think I was in a major city when I first did it too. Boy, you talk about nervous. I was so glad to get out that circle without a mistake. I mean, not a big mistake, you know, like losing the ball, throwing it out the circle, got, or something like that. When you first get in there, you got to keep it simple. You can't Ooh. try no no not, no new shit like Otis Key. I know Otis probably <laughs> watching. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, some people just ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> My first uh, circle was uh, Townsville, Australia. Oh, wasn't a big crowd. I was lucky it wasn't a big crowd. You know, I think I did okay. You know, I did what, uh, what Curly taught me how to do. Um, uh, so it, it was pretty successful. And then every got, year, every, like you, every, you got to keep it simple. Yeah. yeah. Do what you can do. Don't then try I to got, do no shit that you just learned in the bathroom or the shower hey, right before we go if out. You if you can't no. do nothing, just touch it and throw it to somebody. Yeah. I would Look. Yeah, no, but the, hey, do the five basic steps yeah, around right. your back, between your legs, off your knee. Woo! <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I just remember I used to practice constantly. I don't know if those guys still do it now, but before the game, like the hour or so before the game, you guys would tell me, go in the shower. Get, get in the shower. shower. Go to shower, shower. yeah. Because I'm messing <laughs> up stuff in the locker room. 
man, but when I got to that state side and got with Sweet Lou them, and that's why he called me a thief. I stole a lot of Sweet Lou stuff, man. Y'all <laughs> <laughs> Who did? We had a couple of players when I first started that was in the circle that shouldn't have been in the circle. <laughs> and Sweet Lou, you know what this is? We do know what I'm talking about. Curly Boo know what I'm talking about. I know. We ain't gonna say no names. Yeah. But anyway, we are gonna say some names right now. What are some of the uh, great globe trotters, great teammates that you guys had uh, over the years? We, we need to give them a shout out. We need to do a roll call. And if we forget anybody, it is what it is. Here, go ahead, fellas. <laughs> well, I'm, well, I'm go ahead and talk about some of the great players. I'm going to say everybody that you had a, had a chance to play with. Everybody that's on this call, of course. But uh, when I started, I have to go back to Sweet Loop. Uh, remember, the, uh, I played with uh, Ozzy, uh, Dedrick Refugee, Twiggy Sanders, Clyde Austin, uh, you know, of course, Clyde St. Clair, you know. Cap, uh, yeah. you know, got to uh, go with J.B. Brown, God bless his soul, rest in peace. Uh, Billy Ray. Billy Ray Hobley. Billy the, Ray. Rest in yeah. peace. Uh, you know, Tree Gordon. Uh, you know, we looking at uh, uh, Fred Fred Smith. Uh, you know, Preacher man. Preacher man. You know, let's go. <laughs> you know, I'm going to let y'all take it on from there. You know, I'm named about 20. Y'all go ahead and name some. I well, mean, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. I just want to say this, I'll let y'all name it, but it's something that, it, about these showmen, you know, what people don't know about all three of you guys. I think it goes from, Paul is the nicest out of all three of y'all. What you say? What you mean? What when you it comes mean, to the show. As much as Sweet New Laugh, <laughs> mess up that show if you want to. <laughs> hey, Mike. What do you think I got that cut the mic off from? <laughs> Everybody had they move. Hey, hold on. Hey, Mike, if I can interject, yeah. you're right about Lou. Lou will hit your ass in the head with the ball if you mess up his show. Yeah. <laughs> he, show will. Okay. he will hit you in the head. He will hit you in the head with the ball in the hop. Yes. You mess up his show. Paul will cut that mic off. If you see Paul reach for the hip, he mad. Uh. <laughs> so that means I'm the nicest one. No. <laughs> No, you, you don't are. even cut your mic off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, it's, it's, oh. it's, it's just some players that you just got to get ignorant with, man, because they don't get it. You know what I mean? No, no man. It's just something about that showman syndrome, man. Y'all just, if that y'all show one going right, man, y'all, hey, y'all lost, y'all lose it, dude. <laughs> Hey. Yeah, laughing, hey. sweet Lou doing right now. Make that laugh <laughs> fool you, y'all. Hey. Listen, he will get you. I'm telling you, he will get you. But you know yeah, what I have to say? I have to say that. that you know, that's that. That's what? that globe trying to pride, Mike. You go out there every yeah. night, and you know, cause we we put we did a lot of work we did, and um, every night, man, we try to do our best to do. To please the audience, you know, every night, every night, you know. Yeah, man. Um, and we like the temptations, game. man. You know, we like the temptations. You know, you need a, you know, half a crowd still deserve a good show. Yeah. You know. Hey. Were but, you were you there, boo? When we went to uh, Chattanooga, when they had the snowstorm, and it was only about eight people in the stand. <laughs> that and, like, I, I thought you were going to say Jackson, Mississippi. Hey, hey, yeah, hey. that too. But Jackson, <laughs> Jackson State, so I remember, was the, the smallest crowd it was I snowstorm. performed in front of outside of the Pope. And all this guy, <laughs> this, this guy was in the stand. He, he was upstairs to say 41 for the whole game. 40, 41, hey, 41. So we got ready to do the water job. You got it. Speaking, we speaking of that, speaking of that, <laughs> Curly, I got something to say about you too, boo. This is a globe try to show. If you got somebody up there trying to be a comedian, trying to be too funny, oh, you're not even chasing the showman. You get him. <laughs> you get hey, him with the water. Hey, you that hey, it'd be like the water boy. <laughs> nah, roll three even. nine. Roll three nine. <laughs> roll three nine. <laughs> hey, but you know what, Mike? You saying all of that, but you know what? And, and Sweet Lou said it. It wasn't just. You know, yes, we had pride in our show, but everybody that was on the team had pride. You, you, you Curly Boo, Mike, you, Mike, if it ain't going right, if people coming in there and not doing 
standing up and doing what they're supposed to do. Everybody took pride in that show. That's why I have to say, I mean, I got it there in 90, 92, night in the 92, 93 and, and left in 08. And I, and like I said, I got to see showbiz and I got to see Sweet Lou and I got to see how, you know, all the guys took pride and the, the guys that we talking about, we naming guys like Orlando Antigua and Juan Bersher and all these guys that was there, you know, we tell Fred Smith, uh, people that came in like J.B. Brown. J.B. Brown came in, Crunch. he was on a 360 every night off the first dunk. Michael, uh, Michael St. Julian. I mean, but these guys here, no. everybody took pride in that in that era that lasted more than five or six years. But you and know they last that that long because the pride that they took in, they took every night. I mean, no matter the trip or whatever we went through, you know, it was pride in that show. If we were doing the competitive game, we had to practice and do all that all early. Yeah. Our games were still, we them put them. everything in it. Right. And you know, you talk, there's so many guys you can name. Uh, like yes. Mike, Mike used to do those dunks, man. And we had another guy, J.B. Brown, the other one out of Chicago. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm talking about, yeah. yeah. I played with this kid. And I, for for about a week and a half, I didn't know if he was right hand or left hand. Yeah, the way he was You're doing right. that thing, and, he, and and every night, Judge, he did something different. Every night, you know, that, that's what but you, you know. His, his leg is big as Mike too. I can't understand how them guys, them little legs like that, can get up and jump like that. <laughs> hey, you know what? And you know, um, I was gonna say Barry Hardy was the first person I ever seen put his arm in the rim. Mm -hmm. Uh, when he did that, we were somewhere, and he we did that training and camp. put it at the crowd. We, we was in training camp in uh, River Falls, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and he went up and did a windmill. Yes, and put his elbow in the hoop and hung there and pointed, and pointed. at it and shocked all of us. Yeah. Doc, when he came, I was when he done. finally came off the rim, I didn't even go back on defense. I said, "Dude, you just no. made the team." Yeah, <laughs> and you know, and I and I have to say this about Michael Wilson while he's on here, you know. Michael Wilson used to catch some stuff that you threw curly the majority of the time that Mike said one day, I remember him saying, hey, I ain't feeling good, you know, just, you know, you will put it up there. Curly threw that thing that seemed like on the top of the backboard that night. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, this joker came out the, uh, like he just dropped from the ceiling. You can go get it. Boom! I said, oh, uh, you know, timeout. Time out. Well, that's, Paul, when you know, would, that's when you know you got a true go. gold trotter when you give them pass. Cause me and Show, yeah, we didn't spoon feed him. We didn't spoon feed him. <laughs> wasn't by the rim, Judge. You had to bring it to the rim. Hey, I, I got that from you, sweet. Matter of fact, both of y'all. Hey, don't put it by the rim. Let them no. go get it. That's what they're doing. That's what they pay. Go get it. No. So, no. In training camp, in training camp, it used to be funny. Clyde them used to put them new guys in there with me. And <laughs> I give them one chance. They mess up that hop. He go. Get in there, oldest. Get in there, oldest. I, I ain't. I ain't got time for it. But you can tell. You can tell who gonna who gonna be a gold trotter and who not. You know what I mean? And that's, and that's, that's, Don't be wasting my time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know what, Showbiz, you were hard on them. Hey, he was hard. you were hard, <laughs> dude. You was hard on them because it was it'd be some rookie or somebody trying to. I, I used to hate that. The latter stages of my career, they tried to make somebody a star as opposed to letting them emerge as a star. Yeah. And, and they did that I, with, with, uh, with, with the regulator, out. Reggie Phillips. They were promoting this boy, Eli Aiken, all due respect. They were promoting yeah. him. And I'm <laughs> like, wait a minute. That boy, Reggie Phillips, is a bad mother. Okay? Yeah. yeah. He oh was my a bad God. joke. Pookie boy. And he was a star, and they wasn't trying to make him. They were trying to make Eli Aiken the star. But if he was like if somebody, <laughs> belong, if they were trying to make a star. Man, showbiz was like, oh shit, he, he can't do this. He gone. You gone, man. Oh, gone. Yeah. That's that's what I wanted to say. That's yeah. what I wanted to say. Showbiz, hey, if if they had, oh, you talking about hard? <laughs> showbiz famous words. If you didn't get, hey, this is this is a showbiz thing. You would give rookies such a hard time from kicking the bucket. Like a oh. But if oh. you were on the team and you were on the team for over a month and you didn't have no nickname, yeah. showbiz would walk up to you like, hey, you ain't got no nickname. 
Oh, you ain't gonna be here long. <laughs> you gone. Gone. Gone, Jerry. Go. Dude, I ain't gonna mention their name, man, because they might be watching, but we had these two seven footers. <laughs> I knew they wasn't gonna make it. And the Haley twins she treated them so bad. Oh god. We used to call these two seven foot these two seven footers. No, but the Haley the bullshit. There you go. The team there you go. Bullshit. That's what we used to call them. And there you go. When we would be on the bus, the veterans sat in the back of the bus. Rookies sat up front. Yes. But one of them didn't get the memo. <laughs> so he's sitting in the back. And Shobit said, man, you can't sit back here. He said, man, I'm sitting. Next thing you know, Shobit said, I bet you go up there. He said, no, I'm not. I'm staying right here. <laughs> Shobit went and sat next to him on the bus and stripped butt naked. <laughs> <laughs> and, and put his head on his shoulder. <laughs> and you know what? That rookie got up and went to the front of the bus. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and then he would lay like this. <laughs> 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 oh, funny, man, how stories stick out, man. I still remember the story Sweet Lee used to tell me about his coach at Mendo. <laughs> I remember how he used to talk and everything. How he made you guys bathe before the game. <laughs> hey, Lee, what he say? That one, that one. <laughs> what he say, Sweet? How he talk? Y'all go, y'all gonna bathe? No, no. He, he said, um, he said, listen. Well, you know, one practice, this guy was stealing the ball from everybody. He kept taking the ball from everybody. He said, he said, give me the ball. He said, give me this, son. Give me it. Guard me. He said, get. He said mm, God damn. <laughs> he said, he said, here. I <laughs> to you fucking. You need to bathe. <laughs> I never get that story. Well, you know, no, nah, but that wasn't the time he made his babe, Mike. He was on a away game, and we came to hug. He said, "Time out, come here, come here, time out." And he said, hey. <laughs> "And we had a, the lady coach, Miss Andre. said, uh, Miss Andre, is that you?'" <laughs> he said, "No, no, coach, it's not me." And then we had Coach Hustler, uh, said, "Coach Hustler, is that you?" Me. <laughs> He said, well, somebody funky. <laughs> now we're going to bathe before every game. We had to shout before every game after that. Hey, we knew who it was. We knew who it was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. That's a good hey, segue hold on. into. Hold on, hold we on, knew, Paul. Dude. That's a good okay. segue into what was uh, your most memorable moment as the Globetrotter, the funniest moment. And your most embarrassing moment as a Globe Trotter. So go ahead and just jump in. <laughs> Man, but my Every most, day was fun. My most memorable moments, man, you know, people always say, who, you know, we meet a lot of people doing what we do. And, uh, but for me, man, having the opportunity to play with Mel Lock, Curly, Geese, Marcus, Dallas, and all those guys, man. And then they end up playing with you guys. Uh, that's crazy. You end up playing with you guys, being around you guys too, man. is. It, it, that's that's an honor for me to be able to say I played with you guys because you know you got you guys did some great work for this organization for the Globe Trials organization, and um, you know that's why you guys are legend. And, and, and don't worry, son, you coming. You know how it's is. You know, but it, all of that's coming, man, because you guys did a lot of work. When you say I played 15 years, 18 years, 20 years, that's work. That's work. Yeah. It's double years. Globe try to use double years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> double time. Right. You know? Hey man, my most memorable is is it's go it goes back to the first story I told. It's one of my most memorable uh, was the uh, Halle, uh the Halle Berry uh story. <laughs> but uh, we me and Sweet Lou, we flew on, I think Showbiz flew to be with the team, but me and Sweet Lou flew to Indianapolis. Uh it was 2000. Mm -hmm. And I just bought some paintings at the mall. Me and Sweet Lou went to the mall. I had just bought a house. I bought a painting of uh, like Bob Marley. I bought a painting of uh, the Goodfellas. I uh, bought a uh, painting and I bought a painting of Muhammad Ali. And uh, we went to the game. I think we went straight to the game in Indianapolis. Uh, to Indianapolis, me and Sweet Lou. And uh, you know what? They were playing in the Final Four weekend. It was April 1st, 2000. And uh, I broke the world's record. Boom, I'm happy. You know, I got the, I broke the world's record. And so I'm coming out of the locker room. Hold on, Mike. 
Tell everybody about your world record so everybody know what you're talking about. I was a I, I dunked on a 12 foot basket. So I wasn't the fanciest dunker, but in my prime, nobody can get up higher than me. I didn't think just people can do fancier stuff than I do, but nobody can jump higher than me. I, didn't, I, I just didn't believe that. So we coming out of the locker room. I got a big bonus, you know, got a uh, big bonus. Told me he gonna buy, uh, I've got a brand new car. Uh, so I'm walking out the locker room and Otis, uh, Mr. OK Key comes up to me. He said, man, you, you'll you never guess who wants to meet you. I was like, who? He said, man, Muhammad Ali. So we had met him before, but you know what I mean? But guess what I had in my hand? I had a painting, that painting that I bought. Uh, so happened to, with Muhammad Ali and uh, we went to the back and I gave him, I was like, man, you the greatest. I can't tell you, it's explicit. I can't tell you what I what he told me when I said, man, you the greatest. But uh, he said something, I was just like, oh man, you better than that. But uh, he signed my painting right there, man. I still, I got it downstairs in my man cave, man. That's awesome. That's good. Cool. That's, my <laughs> Reggie, uh, Reggie uh, Phillips was like, man, you need to play the lottery. That was a good day for me, man. April 1st, yeah. 2000. Cool. Well. Uh, one of my, I'm, you know, like I said, we got a great, a lot of great moments, man, throughout our career. But I, I would say my most memorable one would be uh, when we went behind the Berlin Wall and uh, <clears throat> brought basketball to them for the first time. And they didn't, you know, they didn't even know nothing about the Globe. Evidently, it was the first time they had actually seen black men. So that you know, when we went out behind the wall and was playing, they were standing up like you know we was apes, like we coming out the trees or something. You know what I mean? I mean there yeah. was no laughter, no nothing. They was no, no, no clapping or nothing. So we just like playing a, a game in a in you know in a in a in an empty gym, so to speak. But didn't happen to go back two years after that. Once they done tore down the wall and saw how you know they had done been. You know, revolutionized and everything, man. When we went in there this time, man, they, they gave us a standing ovation from the from the time we got on the court. They didn't sit down the whole game, and uh, that that was just amazing to me, just to see that you know these people these people had been kept from the world for so long, and now you know the the eyes is open up. So that was a great moment for me. Uh, <laughs> one of my most embarrassed embarrassing moments would have to be Curly was there. <laughs> he don't forget nothing. He don't forget nothing. Either. He don't get nothing. He brought he brought on off of different strokes into the locker room. Oh yeah, I was there too. <laughs> Mike was there. <laughs> so you know, I'm Gary I'm, Coleman. Yeah, Gary <laughs> Coleman. So you know, I'm trying to be you know just like we are charismatic, you know, and joking with him and stuff, you know. So when he walked in, you know, his famous line on the TV show is "What you what you talking about, Willis?" You know what I mean? So I said that to him, and immediately, Curly, what did he say to me? He said, "Don't hey, don't say that fucking shit to me. Don't you say that. I, I'll whoop your ass." And I said to him, "Well, took. I said, let me tell you something. I will kick a mud hole in your little ass. <laughs> I don't give a fuck because you on goddamn different stroke. I will whoop your little ass <laughs> for real, showbiz. Yeah. As soon as he walked in the door, as soon as he walked in the door." Showbiz is gonna say, what you talking about, Willis? And so, <laughs> I mean, he, he didn't step two feet in the door and Showbiz said, as soon as he walked in, man. I hey, man. tell you, the look on his face scared me, man. He just, he frowned up like he was getting ready to jump on you for real. He was for gonna real. Whoop, I, I, I put my money on Gary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, disclaimer here, rest in peace to Gary Coleman. <laughs> hey, uh, hey. Just, just hold on. Uh, talking about Paul rookie year. Remember when you went to Europe, you lost your luggage. Uh, <laughs> my first trip, we was in um, Iceland. <laughs> you remember that boo? And that, yes. that the, the 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 little the little light skinned boy up there, the one took, took the stuff, <laughs> and he had the, the 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 old luggage that I didn't have. Girl, the boo told me that he paid the bellman to hide your luggage. <laughs> I, don't know what they, I don't know what show biz talking about, but I, I, man, Paul, I was nice to you as a rookie. You, you should remember yeah, that. You, you had a tough time as a rookie, but I was nice to you. And then, hey, oh, whoa, 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 whoa! And then I'm gonna be quiet. Tell me where you got the luggage from. <laughs> where did I get the luggage from? 
Garcia. <laughs> I forgot all about that, man. I didn't. Hey, Lou. Yeah. You remember this one? We overseas, and I told her <clears throat> we go to the we go to the corner to the to the sports bar, the bar, and uh, you know I was drinking Crown, right? I'm taking like shots of Crown, right? So I go in there, I, I say, let me get a shot of Crown, right? He gave me one. I down that, pow. Well, that tastes good. Let me get another one, pow. <laughs> I told you. He said seventy five dollars. I said, seventy five dollars. <laughs> that's from Age Crown Royal. I said, let me take a minute. That that ain't no older than the one we got in the United States. I walked out. I walked out. Right. The hotel was like about five five buildings down. Right. So we get ready to leave the next day. I ain't paid the bill. I come downstairs. The policeman is in the lobby. I said, you got change for a hundred. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Let me tell you, let me tell you what he did though, Mike. So he sent postcards home, right? Oh yeah. He sent postcards <laughs> home, and when he got home, he said they never got there. He said, "Well, then the postcard never got home." He said, "But I, I said, well, what'd you put on?" He said, "I'm putting stamps on the stamp he bought from the state judge." <laughs> <laughs> hey, sweet Lou, remember um, what's the name talking about um? Hey, we're not going to stop for gas. E.G. We were going to Australia. He was flying, talking about, we're not going to stop for gas? The sweet little say, well, we're going to stop on cloud nine and, and <laughs> fill up. <laughs> hey, I remember this, man. I remember we were flying to South America. Sweet Lou and uh, Shobi is always laughing at this story. I was sitting behind them, and they were sitting beside each other. And a flight attendant came down and was like, uh, you want steak or chicken? Said, <laughs> you said, give me the chicken. So... She gave sweet uh sweet little plate the chicken was about this big. I swear about that big. I mean showbiz fell out laughing. I'm talking about just laugh. So she's like, what would you like? Showbiz said, shit, give me the steak. <laughs> Man, she gave showbiz that steak. That steak was this big. <laughs> they looked at each other upside the head, man, and just fell out laughing, man. Yeah, dude, that was funny. Yeah. I think I think my I know my favorite well most memorable moment was with President Mandela, and, and, uh, hands down. Mm -hmm. um, you know we were facing one way. And he came from the back, but you knew it was an aura in the room when he walked in, and you know meeting him and just and we was the first um, team in the Free and Democratic South Africa, and once we met him. You know, we met him, we played, and you know, knowing some of his family and stuff of that nature. Uh, the next year we came back and uh, he was like, speaking to everybody, how you doing? Then he said, hey, Showtime, how you doing? I said, did he just say my name? That right there changed me. I, I, mean, I still am not good with names, but I, you know, just to, to have somebody with that caliber to, just to just to greet you in that way, it was it was special, mm -hmm. and I think one of them, <laughs> well, I had a lot of these, but the 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 one I think that that I, Mike Wilson was there, Curly Boo was there, <laughs> we were, Curly Boo always there, yeah, hey, always. I, Sweet Lou, you might have been there. No, no, Tex was there because we was in Utah and the lights was out, and oh, we was yeah. doing a circle, <laughs> and doggone, I went like. Playing like I'm gonna kick the ball when it come by, man! I missed the ball, missed the and hit the floor. Bow! I said, "Oh, I jumped up so quick before the lights turned on." Yeah, I remember. I that. said, "Oh my God, that it, it, it was always in Utah." Then when Coach cussed me out, talking about ah, this ain't that game. <laughs> this ain't that game. You keep mentioning it now. It ain't that game. Hey, Paul, we Paul, you mentioned. I not do the God rest his soul, uh, uh, Tex Harrison. But he was right. You mentioned Carl Malone's name that that night probably twenty times, man. <laughs> hey, man, we cannot hey. we cannot talk go go this segment, man, without talking about the great Tex Harrison, man. No. But hold on, before we talk about Tex, Sweet Lou, I got to uh, defend me and you, man. Okay, if you ain't been on these Zoom calls, man. <laughs> Tex up, man. 
We was in the gym. <laughs> and, my boy, and my boy was getting crazy. My boy was acting up. You know what I'm talking about? What his name is, uh, uh, Curly? Mahmoud. No, 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 no. What are you talking about? Who are you talking to? Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh Le Leon. Oh. Leon Smith. Leon, Leon Smith. Leon was Leon was talking to everybody in the line. And me like, I say, man, I don't know who you talking to me. No, hey, no, it didn't go down like that. It did not go down like that. Curly, hey, Curly had me in tears on the way back to the hotel. I mean, because you know, doing training camp, everybody knows the showman gonna make the team, so they over there ripping everybody. I mean, we knew and, and, and showbiz over there talking about everybody. And so, they just got in too. They just got in at that time. Leon about six nine, by what about two forty five? You know, <laughs> good ass. Kind of off. Ain't no kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Leon Smith. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't want to see him in the alley. <laughs> or on the street. Yeah, so they over there laughing, ha, 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 he, 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 he. So Leon walk up on him. They ain't see Leon walk up on him. <laughs> Leon walked up on him and said, hey, man, whoever y'all talking to, man, y'all, whoever y'all talking about, y'all need to keep it to yourself. Talk to, talk to, talk in your head or talk to your, your roommate in your room or on the elevator or something. You need to watch who, what you're saying. No, so, he ain't said that. So uh, yes, no, yes, so Leon walks off. Leon <laughs> half court. Leon wasted. Showbiz wasted. Uh, Leon gets to the other side of the court and said, "Who the fuck he talking to?" What's <laughs> 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 Sweet Lou say? Sweet Lou say. Sweet Lou say he ain't talking to me. <laughs> hey, I, I walked over to both of them. I said. <laughs> He punked both of y'all asses. Oh, no, he didn't. I don't know who he said he talking to. I said, man, hey, dude came up to y'all and said, whatever y'all got to say, you can say to my face. Didn't neither one of you brothers say one thing. Not one he thing right. until he walked 30 feet away from y'all. Hey, he ain't talking to me. Right. You remember that night, though? He was, he was oh. playing pool against somebody in there. God. Now, uh, that's Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea was in there playing pool, yeah, and yeah. he was going off. And Sweet Pea said, Man, um, I think I left something in my room. I think I <laughs> he walked up out of that too. Hey, Mike, tell the story about old Polynes. Me and old Polynes. Oh yeah, that was one. That was a funny story, man. Uh, I, I always crack about. That's one of the Paul funny stories, man. We in Utah, so we Utah at the club. again. Yeah, Utah, and uh, we at the club. So we play. We just had played, but I, I think the 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 yeah. Jazz were playing the next day. So we at the club, and Paul's at the club. You know, Paul, you know, at the club having fun. And uh, he was sitting there with Olden Polonies. Olden Polonies was sitting there drinking. It was getting late. Olden Polonies <laughs> looked at Paul and said, man, you know what? I need to get my butt out of here. I've been drinking, man. I got a whole, you know, we played late. I got a whole shack. I got a whole shack. I need to go get me some rest. He said he got up and thought about it. He said, you know what? It ain't gonna make no difference. Give me another drink. <laughs> he was like, man, I think, I, oh, man, I got to go, man. We got a game tomorrow, man. Man, we hanging out. He said, shoot, who we play? The Lakers? Shit. Oh, shit. Hey, give me another round. It ain't gonna make no difference. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I said, oh, this is stupid, man. <laughs> hey, but, we but, had some fun, man. We really had some fun. But you can't talk, you can't go in this segment without talking about text, though, man. We got text, text got okay? Uh, you know Texas what, Mike, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that. It's a great segue. Please tell us uh, how what text meant to you guys, you uh, know, uh, or better for worse, man. Uh, he left his, uh, his, his impact was enormous. He left his mark on all of us, just like the great Billy Ray Hobley. When I, when I talk about Globe Tries I play with, I, I don't think there's a week that goes by that I don't think about Billy Ray Hobley. You know, and the uh, impact he got, that he had. So he got AOL, man. Huh? You still got dialogue. You froze. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry about that. Well, yeah, what I was saying was, go ahead and talk about uh, <laughs> about Tex Harrison. Tell us uh, about old dude because he left his mark on all of us. 
He did, man. I'm gonna tell you something about the text, though. I'll go first because I, you know, you guys were closer to text than I was, but we, me and text had a mutual respect. Uh, uh, I remember we were in Australia. Tex, I mean, the globe trotter years, man. They, 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 they hit you hard, man. And we were in Australia one time. I remember Tex saying, "My first year, he was like, yeah, man, it's, I need to call my mama." And uh, so some he was supposed to do with his mama. And I looked at Tex how old he is. I was like, Tex, you need to stop that line. You know, you know, I didn't know. <laughs> and sure enough, his mom was still alive, yep. man. He came to the game, man. But, yep, yep. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. you know, back when I was a showman judge. Um, yeah, you just had them uh, Polaroid cameras, so you just take the picture. You take, line up, line up, line up, take a picture, take a picture. And I didn't get it, and I turned the camera and turned the camera to myself. And I yeah. turn around, watch development, say, hey, coach, hey, coach, look, I turned white, I turned white. He said, I wish like hell you was white, I'd get rid of your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he used to say stuff, he used to laugh himself. He rarely laughs himself, but sometimes he used to say stuff so funny, man. <laughs> he laughed himself, man. Hey, like you said, there's so many moments, and and I and I and I probably wouldn't well, no, ain't no problem. I wouldn't be out here with I wouldn't have been out there without without text support during the time. It, it's it's amazing that one thing about but, it, man. He, he, he said, but I mean, you could say so much of stuff he said from, from when we was overseas that. and he got a, he wanted a cheeseburger. No, oh, he wanted a hamburger. And the lady came back, gave him the hamburger. He's like, yeah, love. Thank you, sweetie. Oh, you're so <laughs> sweet and wonderful. Thank you, love. Hey, hey, I said no cheese. It was cheese on the, I mean, just stuff Gee, all the time. He didn't say it like that. He didn't say it like no. that. Yeah, I, you know, just for the public sake, you know. <laughs> I remember this story. Um, Sweet Lou told me about Tex about uh, when they brought took their wives over uh, to Paris, and the taxi cab took his money. You know how Tex is about his money. So the taxi cab cheated him out his money. Tex was mad all night. He said, him, "Sweet Lou said him and his him and his wife and Tex and his wife they were out. Said he walked out the restaurant. <laughs> he said he saw the taxi driver. He was like." That's that mother. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we went to the Moulin Rouge. We went to the oh, Moulin wow. Rouge. Yeah. Jim and Gator. And, you know, Jim and Gator can't really drink alcohol. So, yeah. they, you know, and they really wasn't the best of buddies, you know, playing. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So they went in there and started drinking that champagne. They came out like this hug that walking full. <laughs> <laughs> that's when Tex came out. That, that's that, man. <laughs> hey, Tex is a fool. You mean what, what? What did Tex say when um when um what's his name from Houston was talk, was playing was playing them in um uh, dominoes? Remember when he got mad? Said the uh, um. No, when he ate your cheese, when he ate your hamburgers. That was in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he ate Boots hamburgers. What? I ate everything. <laughs> hey, Coach, I had an apple pie. You need the apple pie. <laughs> I you ate that motherfucker too. <laughs> See, the thing I that, remember, you know. I know Tech said a lot of things, man. I told y'all, I don't know if y'all remember this. Tech told this guy in the locker room, he said, man, if this was the beauty contest, you'll come in second place. He was like, thank you, coach. He said, hell, we all tied for first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he told a player one time, we was in, we was in South Africa. Curly, you was there for this one. He said, okay, we'll, we'll get some guys to go out there and do the magic circle. We was gonna, we was gonna go see Mandela the next day. And Manny Jackson wanted the guys that's in the magic circle to perform in front of Mandela. But he wanted Darren Jenkins to be with us because he was the tallest player on the team. See, I wasn't going to say that. I wasn't going to tell the name. I wasn't going to tell the name. What it said. It is what it is. <laughs> He's like, okay, now you do this. Y'all do this. Y'all do this. Well, coach, uh, you be coach. I'm, the, uh, I'm, I'm Darren. Uh, coach. What you want me to do? What you want me to do, coach? Go ahead, Curly. What, son, what you want me to do? Son, I know you can't handle the basketball. I understand. <laughs> All I need you to do is just to stand up and look ignorant. 
That's all I need you to do. <laughs> what? What? Man, I, I that was one of the coldest shits I ever heard somebody say to somebody, man. I didn't remember he told Ethan, son, this is a horse race. Jackass is run tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I use this with even with people here when you always talk about something. Oh, you trying to piss on me and tell me it's raining. Mm-hmm. Yo, he said he that told all me, the time. He told me when I was a rookie. He said, Curly Boo, I can put your brain in the eagle and it'll fly backwards. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, Boo, Boo talking about, Coach, I'm going to uh, probably get married. <laughs> I remember, I remember he said, what? We're going to have a prenup. <laughs> <laughs> what did he tell us, we do? What did he tell you what the hell are you going to put in that Mustang in your scrapbook? <laughs> Cut. <laughs> That's a wrap. Yeah. Hey, I, I, he was How about you, Showbiz? You got any Tex Harrison stories? Yeah, I remember when we was on the plane. You was there with E.T. Was, E.T. was on that same flight. And we was back there in the back. We were getting some drinks. And E.T. was just talking to Tech for about 30 minutes. And Tech just stopped and said, hey, sir, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> What's wrong with your chops? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Curly, remember when yeah. he was on the plane with him? He talking about, they just don't like me. Just oh, like I can't me. talk about that, man. I, know, I can't talk that's about why that. I that uh, way. Hey, I can't uh, talk about uh, that. Uh, I was there. Uh-huh. You, you was there, Sweet Lou. Yeah. Can't talk about that. Coming, what about when he was coming through the uh, security? You know, Texas had that bag, had everything. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they were going through his bag. Hey, he was like, you know, he they had the, he had the toothpicks. They were putting the pins out. They, you know, he had those toothpicks that looked like a sword. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was already mad. They were like, hey, you. It, it, it's I'm a tooth, I'm a teeth. See you, I'm a teeth. <laughs> hey man, Texas is so mad. Texas out of breath. You know, Texas get out of breath. He sat down. He looked at me. He said, "What airline is that?" He said, <laughs> he said, he said "I'm gonna get their ass." <laughs> hey, he said, "My life, my life is in that bag. My whole life hey, is in that bag." Hey y'all, <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all. We were. It was the first time I played in New Orleans, and it was. Uh, we were sitting in the in the stands as the people started to walk in. And I'm sitting there with Tex, Lou, Billy Ray, and this lady walked by and she <laughs> did have a big booty. She had a big booty. And she walked by and Tex said, excuse me, lady. And she turned around and she said, yes. Tex said, can I have one of them watermelons you got in your back pocket? <laughs> she said, what you say? You heard me. Can I have one of them watermelons you got in your back pocket? It was his delivery that he could get away yeah. with saying something, mm-hmm. you know. This, uh, but I, I hope his daughters are not watching tonight. But Speaking text, of delivery, man, text I was hilarious. About, I wanted to talk about each and every one of those these showmen that are on here. You know, I know it, you guys are something, but each one of you guys has something really special, man. And uh, Paul, you are very consistent, man. I mean, you brought it every night. I mean, no matter how tired you were or whatnot, you know, so that's that was your thing, man. You were, we knew what you were going to bring to the table, man. That's just, this is my opinion. Um, so Biz, hey man, you can make something out of nothing. It didn't matter what was going on or what was doing, whatever we needed done, you could do it. If we needed like, man, we need three minutes. You're going to give us three minutes just right off the top of your head, man. You, you. Hey man, I've seen you. You are like a genius. When I say I seen it, we were in Indianapolis, man, and um, they had that big G or big Globy, and they had a bunch of hats in there. <laughs> and it was, uh, and they had all different types of hats. And every time Showbiz put on the hat, he was just messing around. Like he had a, he put the cowboy hat on. He was walking like a cowboy. <laughs> he put the beret on. He started doing a rerun. I mean, he just was. I mean, he was just going. And that was Showbiz. But with Sweet Lou, I mean, his timing was is so incredible, man. I mean, he did it with such poise. He he did the show like Luther Vandross saying, you know, 
I know I remember uh going to see Luther. Sorry, Paul and Curly, you didn't get a chance to go see Luther. That time I tell you. <laughs> we did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I remember being such a ah uh, Luther because he didn't strain. He he was just singing, man. You know, he was I ain't never seen anything like that. And that's how Sweet Lou did the show. I mean, because this timing, man, it was incredible. I mean, it was, I mean, how I was I was even watching you when I got my legends ring. I was watching you from the bench, and there was a ring where you picked up a chair and something like that. But the timing on it, man, you it just it was incredible, man. And it was it was always incredible working with you three guys, man. But because no matter, I mean, I've seen showbiz go out there with he no, he shouldn't have been playing. He should have been out. He should have went home. I mean, they <laughs> playing in his knee. I mean, he's still going out there and playing, man. So I just take my head off to you guys, man. You guys are special, man. You guys are handpicked for a reason, you know. And they wanted to make me a third quarter showman, but I I really hated it, honestly, because you got to think about it. Think about going behind you three. They done seen you two quarters. Then you got to come in, and I got to come and do something. <laughs> that's a, that's a difficult job. Sweet Lou then came be like, "You get your ass out of there. You doing it?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, always trying to sneak out of there. <laughs> but yeah, man, you guys. I mean, with Lou, man, I just say, man, it just and you had the crowd in the palm of your hand. Dog, you didn't even hardly raise your voice, dude. I mean, how you did it, man. So, like I said, my hats off to you. And be you a globe trotter? You know a globe trotter. When they bring those new guys into camp, man. You knew who was gonna make the team immediately, right yeah. off, man. So it didn't take long. You know, uh, I I think everybody on the call, man. I mean, Boo's been around this stuff his whole life, from his pops, you know, and his whole life. And this is something he wanted to do his whole life. And I had the opportunity to play with, you know, two of the all-time great, Metal Lock and Curly. Yes. I, I mean, three with Geese and Marcus Haynes. So I yeah. had the opportunity to play oh. with all of them. And being a showman, man, when I played with Mel Lock, it was timing for Mel Lock. And with Geese, didn't know what the hell he was going to do. <laughs> yeah. And I loved it. I loved it. Every man, you know, just didn't, never knew what he was going to do. It was great, man. And uh, we talked about all these good players we played with. And, and you know, uh, shit, Ricky Brown. You got a kid named Ricky Brown with the Alabama. Uh, Sam Drummer. You know, Ovi Dodson. Jimmy Blacklock. I mean, we, it's so many that you y'all remember Costa Malone? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe, I, I've been doing this forty something years now, and on my mama, I ain't never seen a person. Costa Malone, the only person I ever knew had a package sent to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. They send some food, Mike. We've been friends. They send hey. some food. <laughs> hey. hey, look at me. Pringles. He kept them Pringles. Look at hey. <laughs> so we, we riding the bus. We riding the bus late at night. And you couldn't, you, you know, you hear a rat piss on cotton. So we ride the bus at night. <laughs> and all of a sudden, this cost him alone. He reaches his hand behind the seat. All you hear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I remember. Uh, I remember I, they sent him home. Yeah. He was like, taste. He was like, Coach, what I'm gonna do? He said, son, taste it. You got two choices. <laughs> NFL or the WWF. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse him why, see who plays. Excuse him why. Excuse him hey, why. Uh, hey, um, we gonna wrap this up here in a minute. Um, and we getting on two hours here, but you know, we can go all night, but I'm looking at some of the people that's watching uh, this show and I'm just gonna name some of them. Robert Fairley and uh, Andre Branch. I shot. Uh, let's see, Jason Yoder of the Generals. Hey, before I even continue to read some of these names, what were some of the great Washington Generals that you guys remember that made an impact during your career, go ahead and give them a shout out. You just oh, got Yoda. Yoda was one of my. Um, well, you you got to mention Sarge. Yeah, yeah. Sarge. Troy uh, Pennington. Shout out to Troy Pennington. Yeah, Sam right. Drum. Well, not Sam Drum, but Sam Sawyer. Super Sam Sawyer. I was yeah. close with a lot of those guys, guys, man. Bill Cunningham, Billy, Billy Chat Campion. Hey, Sweet Lou, who was the guy that used to guard you? Yeah, Cliff Payton. 
Cliff. Cliff. Yeah, big Cliff. I man, I had a, I had a bunch of guys, man. I was close with Kevin Kirshney, man. Uh, Chris Caselny, one of my favorite guys out there, man. He wasn't out there long, man. But we were real close, man. His name Dave Stagawall was yeah. a great shooter, man. Stagawall is in the corner. Stagawall, <laughs> baby, in the corner. I give you his number. Yeah, Stagawall went a week without missing the shot, dog. I never forget that, dog. He went. I got uh oh uh oh. You got to tell the story when he told Tex. Well, Smokey said, uh, I got him. He ain't gonna score no more. That was Mike. That him. was Mike Dillard. That was Mike Dillard. <laughs> it was Mike Dillard. Was a, Mike uh, Dillard. Very skilled globetrotter, man. I mean, great, I mean, general, man. Uh, he was New York Nationals at the time. You know, he, he was, he like gave three, us the business that night. For like three or four games, man, he was giving us the business. And Elmer, from 40 that minutes. That was my guy, too. Played it Elmer out. String B. Martin. Yeah, oh, played at oh. Arkansas, played at Arkansas. He was giving him the business and Tex giving Elmer the business. Say, son, he is killing you. What are you gonna do? <laughs> so the next day, uh, Elmer walks up the coast and say, hey, hey, watch tonight. You might as well call me a national because I'm gonna be up in his jersey. I'm gonna be all <laughs> up in him. As soon as that game started, Mike Dillon, wow, hit, hit a three. Wow, hit another three. Punk faked him, took him to the hole, Smokey yelled out, help! Hey. <laughs> hey, me and everybody on the team fell out laughing. We didn't even, because we couldn't help. I mean. Man, let me tell you something, Mike, to, uh, to your point or to your story. I ain't never heard nobody scream help the way that Smokey did when he got pumped back. He was, help! <laughs> and Tex was over there, he giving you the blues, son. He killing you. And then, uh, he got mad because we were laughing. We were walking back to the huddle. And he said, man, what you laughing for? You supposed to say help, right? You supposed to say help. <laughs> help! <laughs> You're doing a great job, son. Man, yeah. give a, great you gotta job. give a shout out to, uh, you gotta give a shout out to uh, Bobo Howell, Bobo Hubbard, and Larry Shardy Coleman, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Barry Hart, I mean, Barry, um, uh, hey, why well, can't think of Barry's last Bobo. name? Her Tyrone Herb Brown. Barry Terry. Barry Terry. 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 Yeah, that's hey, you know, Barry Terry. Man, you didn't mention you had another guy from uh, Savannah. Kevin Sutton. Hey, no, we know they call him Boo, call him homemade. You know, we're taking pictures. <laughs> we're taking globe pictures, pitches, and they gave us globe pitches, pitches. So he missed the pictures. He had his picture made. <laughs> so this dog called him homemade. <laughs> hey, sweet Lou, I forgot I got that my first luggage out of the <laughs> garage. You told me you said I got that. I said I got that out of the garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> what, hey, what did he tell you that for? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, you know, I, I was ignorant. I was ignorant. My first trip. It was a first. Yeah, single. that for one of the Haley twins. <laughs> hey, man. You guys have said so much, you know, me and Curly, we got great memories, man. I oh, mean, yeah, that's, yeah, I, I know it, I know it. Who was the bellman you know, then? If y'all still got something, who was the bellman? <laughs> who we call the bellman? Oh, that, was first, that was your first European trip, Paul, that was your first trip. Oh, that wasn't me then. Uh, Reggie was the bellman? Dixon. Yeah. Who? Reggie Dixon. Yeah. <laughs> He the pool. We had checked in the room. I'm sitting in the room, and I, I so I'm sitting. There, uh, Sandra Hodge <laughs> walked by my room. And she ain't got a luggage in her hand. Next thing I come, Reggie behind her, got hand like this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sweet Lou. Hey, uh, <laughs> you remember? Uh, you remember <laughs> Spawn, uh, one of my greatest times <laughs> in Gold Trotters, man, is um when we did Germany? the Space Jam tour. We did the Space Jam tour. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we had some fun, man. It was it was the Dunkers and Sweet Lou. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Dunkers and Sweet Lou, huh? We were in Europe promoting Space Jam because it was coming out on video over there. But we were in Germany. We were in Dusseldorf, Germany, man. I'll never forget that night, man. That was when uh, the night actually Princess Di was killed that night. Uh, we were in Germany, man. So they treated us well, man. We went into this club. This <laughs> night. It was clubs inside of a club. So it was like like five or six different clubs. Somebody took some pictures of us. Yeah. He always said he had. But look, me, Sweet Lou, and Fred in the DJ booth, <laughs> rapping to uh, Biggest Malls. 
<laughs> yeah, that was <clears throat> man. Man, had the pictures of us. How you get the pictures? I don't know. Somebody, somebody took some pictures of us. But Sweet Lou, that was a night, man. You know, I was man. That was that was a uh, hell of a night. Hey, and doing that thing, they used to they used to raise the goal. It started off about nine, ten feet, raise the goal up. After they got to about eleven feet, shot walked by me and said, "Don't call my name." <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I, I got to talk about that, Mike. Uh, you breaking that record, and I was there when you broke the record twice. And well, you broke the record the first time, and you you set a new record. And I remember when they cranked that rim up to 12 feet, I stood underneath it and looked at it. And I said, oh my God, it, this, I mean, freak of nature. It doesn't and even look when, I tell, when I tell people about That's athleticism, that they don't believe it, you and know? They don't, uh, it's intimidating if you look at it that way, man. I just never looked at it that way. You know what I mean? It's funny how I got into the, thinking about the Guinness Book of World Records because it was during college, man. Uh, a young lady that worked in the basketball office, University of Memphis, her son was looking in the Guinness Book of World Records and Joey Johnson, uh, uh, he had the world record. His brother played in the NBA. Uh, Dennis they, Johnson's they, younger brother. Yeah, Dennis Johnson's younger brother named Joey Johnson. He had the record for like 11-6 or something like that. So Midnight Madness, I come my senior year, I try to do it. But I missed, you know what I mean? So I didn't get it done. So I think that kind of got Manny's attention and that's what kind of carried on to doing the world record thing. So, mm -hmm. you know. Well, you show, you show if bust that out the water. If really did, it was you, Judge, no yeah. doubt about that. So, uh, yeah, the, the highest I ever dunked, I think was like 12 too, but it was unofficial. Yeah, but. Yeah. But well, well fellas, we gonna wrap this up, but I, I just wanna uh, give a shout out to some of the people that are watching that uh that love you guys love us uh robert fairley andre branch uh to sweet lou jill mccoy uh your former neighbor said hello yeah. jason yoder stretch robinson remember old stretch i'll just when you and say something about stretch i'm sorry <laughs> no, i'm glad you didn't that's my <laughs> boy right there <laughs> see stretch was a vegetarian. Stretch was the biggest vegetarian I ever seen. <laughs> I told you don't talk about my man. Stretch <laughs> used to stay hungry. Hey man, you got any cookie? You got <laughs> hey, and you remember old uh, Kenny Evans, old Rock, what'd you call him, Lou? Rock Globy? Yeah. Rock yeah. Globy. He was the first Rock Globy. Yep. Yes. They beat him of course, him the up. preacher oh, yeah. man, Fred Smith. Uh, <laughs> Who was that in the, in the um, tight? Stuart Sternberg yeah, is like, watching. What's up, What's up, Stu? Stu Little Mike you McLaughlin. Now, you, you may remember him, Lou, from uh, my rookie year, little guard. Mike, you know Mike, big time coach, women coach. Yeah, I know Mike. Of course, the, the airman, Greg Bell, is watching. Flash, Tim Merrigan. Oh, man. Brandon Dean. Brandon. Oh, Brandon. Oh, Sterling, that's another Sterling Louisiana Forbes, cat. great teammate, Boobie. old Boovy. What's yeah. up, little, little ankles? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jeff Brucolari from Tulsa. Jeff, Jeff. Uh, old Skippy Fade, Mike St. Julian. Yeah, <laughs> Skippy Fade. Hey, that's Ooh, a Percolator, so Reggie Perkins, Chad Allen. Reggie Perkins. Well, yeah, Perkins. My, that's, my, that's my years, my crew. You remember Persia Sled? Of yeah. course, Courtney Jones. <laughs> yeah. 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 JJ is watching. With my Chad sister, Allen. My sister Vicky. Let's see. Oh, Paul man. Patrick, one of the Globies. Which, which, which Chad Allen? It was two. I didn't know there was two. Otis Key. You remember Chad used to play with me, seven foot Chad. Dark skin from Ohio, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ovi Dotson oh. is watching. No, number 17. What's up, Ovi? Hey man, I've never met Ovi or I've never met Twiggy. Wow. What? And Anki. Oh, Anki, boy. It takes Anki. Oh, Anki. <laughs> oh, Anki. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my boy Malcolm. My boy Malcolm told me to say hello to you fellas from Peoria. I know y'all remember. Peoria, my, man, my boy Mike. Malcolm looked like OJ. 
Yep. So, uh, you know, I, I'll get to the rest of the comments, but this will be on demand once uh, we stop here. But, man, we could go all night, man. We, we've been, we traveled the world together. It's a pleasure to see you guys with everything that's going on right now. We have a bonding through basketball. We have a bonding through the Globetrotters that's everlasting. I love you, brothers. I've been around the world with you, and we could do this all night long. And I hope that when things, when the smoke clears, we'll all be able to get together again. It's, uh, it's a shame that there is no Globetrotter reunion. And it seems that a Globetrotter reunion is a funeral. You know, I see more Globetrotters at, at funerals these days. It is what it is. But man, I love you brothers and it's on tape, it's recording and it's live. I love you brothers and I miss you. Love I you miss too, man. you. You yeah. Google me, hey. you Thank Google y'all. me, you guys pop up. I Google you, we all pop up, man. So we have a bonding that's everlasting. I love you and I appreciate you and thank you for coming on, man. Yeah, no hey, problem, man. Hey. Go eat your thank taco. y'all, man. Go eat your taco. Go <laughs> eat your taco. Hey, man. Right now. I want to give a shout out to oh. <laughs> Hey Lou, that's the Clyde Austin. Thank you. <laughs> See, he told it. He wasn't going to do it. <laughs> it is what it, it is. <laughs> hey man, I just want to give a shout out to all the guys out there. And, you know, some of the guys we might not have mentioned, man, but you know, they know we love them, man. Uh, you guys, you guys been great, man. I love all of you for what you've done. And I enjoy playing with our showbiz. You know, man, you go way back. Yeah, Who's man. the strongest glow trial I ever played with? <laughs> He's the what? Judd, I can't flip the ball from the free throw line to the bat. He'd be on the other side of the floor <laughs> flipping the ball. Can you do that, Mike? No. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Look, I, man, I love you guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, Boo, for inviting me, man. Appreciate it. Love you too, man. All right, love man. y'all, man. Thank y'all for everything, love man. Love y'all, man. Y'all have a good one. Yeah, All right. Hey, is that, <laughs> that a shift for roll? Bye, Lou. That a shift for All right, man. You got to take care, man. All right, man. All right, son. Man. Y'all take care. All right. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs>